Hello there, friends, and welcome to Strangers in the Night. Virtual Strangers in the Night. I am your host, Wes. With me, as always, are my good friends. What's up, Roots? How you doing tonight, brother? Well, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, how about you? Yeah, not bad. F- feeling pretty good, actually, uh, having played so much VR over the last two days. I think I played more VR this weekend than I played in the whole last month combined. Uh, Eric, what about you? How are you doing tonight, man? I'm rocking and rolling, man. Spent a couple of days at the beach, got a little re- rest and relaxation, and actually did still play some VR, too. So kind of like the best of both worlds. Uh, we, we played some stuff last night, and I feel like the last, I don't know, 10 days or two weeks, I've been playing more VR than I normally do or get a chance to. So it's always a, it's always a happy time for me when I get a chance to do that. And good yeah. games, too. Uh, I mean, uh, a lot of good games. It, yeah. That's the thing, right? Like, uh, it, it, would, it wouldn't be nearly as cool if, the uh the last month or so of releases haven't been so strong uh which is kind of what tonight's all about Uh, a little bit of a hybrid show tonight Uh, i mean we're doing game of the month uh but it isn't strictly going to be game of the month we're going to lead in with some game impressions uh that were due from last uh friday and then uh we're going to end out with some uh viewer comments because everyone loves that so i I think people are going to like the uh the show people have been really digging uh, game of the month the last few months and uh, people always love the uh, viewer comments so uh we're a nice nice uh, beefy show tonight but uh guys we we did it again we missed friday again and it wasn't my fault this time <laughs> it was definitely uh, not wes's <laughs> fault 100 percent. it was partially my fault partially mash's fault i just had a, such a crazy i was like a 12 hour day i didn't get home till like nine something and uh I just didn't feel like doing any. I didn't feel like doing a show, let alone going into VR. I'm kind of glad we did, waited because we had so much to go into, and it would have kind of shortchanged a lot of those games. Yeah, got some co-op in. Got to buzz some ghosts. Who you gonna call? Roots. <laughs> I, I gotta call the Ghostbusters, man. Me, you, and Mash, the Dream Team. Although I um <laughs> seemed my characters seemed to be deaf for some reason. So it was very interesting. <laughs> Just for a moment. There's, there's always jank. There's always jank with some with anything you do with VR. It's always there seems to be always some type of jank. I mean, anybody, especially well, PC VR. But I don't know. Even 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 like the closest thing to console gaming, which would be the Quest, is the same. Always seems like there's issues. That's why a when bit. a game comes out that's like there is no jank it's just like it really stands out and i would say vertigo 2 or type game like that where you even when it has a little bit of jank it's fixed so quickly and um it just uh yeah it makes a big difference yeah well i remember i i streamed vertigo 2 that first time and uh, got stuck because the buttons oh, yeah. didn't work on the console remember that yeah that's right i do remember that yeah yeah that was frustrating man like it was a whole like hour or something like on it was like a i think we were doing a real-time review and we couldn't make it through like just this one section i played over and over and over and over again and um like i ended up getting so frustrated that i I think i beat my head into the screen or something like that and And then that worked (laughs) yeah yeah that was um, that was a that was a weird bug and um yeah my favorite was grab when the the guy just went up the elevator without me, and I'm like, "Oh, dude, get back here!" Um, yeah, super cool. Uh, but no, man, I've been having fun uh, this this weekend uh, playing all these games, and um, I mean, Eric, it says a lot because we had some pretty high profile games get delayed this um, th- this month, and still to have what we ended up having. Um, I mean, just looking at the nominees this month, there, there's twice as many here for, um, for, you know, overall than what we normally have, right? Normally we have 12 to 15 titles. What we I didn't count, but we must have 20 to 25 on here right now. And a lot of games I didn't even put on here. Like there was a lot that I didn't even nominate. Yeah, I mean, as slow as the summer is, it's it's like you hit September, October, and then, you know, November and December are just, like, crazy. I mean, you know, I, I we were looking for games, like, in, in early in the spring and even, you know, mid through summer, and then the floodgates are off. And, like, we're going to have stuff, you know, like, I think on my show on Thursday, we did, like, upcoming games for November, 
And the list for November is insane. It's even better than the list that we had for October. And that's like what we know of. Like we always have stuff that will drop out of nowhere that maybe, maybe won't be as high profile as some of the other games, but will still be good games that'll come too. So, I mean, like, and this is, this is why that we kind of have to take a little break because it's just too hard. It's too, it's too hard for us all to get prepared for these shows and play stuff and, and get in and do stuff. And guess what? We have stuff that we want to go back to just because I like it. Like me and Wes went back into Dungeons and Eternity and I would have went back into it more if I didn't have more stuff to play to or you know play with. And then I, I went back into like, you know, Mother Gunship Forge again this week several times because, you know, guess what? I want to just game for me sometimes too. I want to play stuff that <laughs> I just want to play for me and not because I need to play it or I need to. So, or I have to for a review. So yeah, I mean, this, this time of the year is so busy and, I don't know. We we just want to try and have some fun too. Isn't that the curse? What? Like the curse of like all these games. You have all like every game you would want to play. You barely pay for anything, but yet you don't have time to to go into any of the games you want to go into, and you're forced to go into games that you don't want to go into. And so, like, it's some of sometimes that can like that can wear. You know, it sounds like a, a third or a third, first world problem. Like people are like, "Fuck you, Roots." You know, but. Uh, Sometimes I don't want to play some of the games we have to go into. And like I do because people want to know. And so it, it's it's kind of a it, it can be a it can be actually a, a weird thing. So well, um I don't I don't play anything that I don't want to play, really. Honestly, I only cover the stuff that I'm curious about. If you saw the list uh, of shit that came out this month that we didn't even touch. <laughs> You, you you would understand there was so much garbage that came out this month uh but there was so much good stuff too um now th- there were games that i went into that ended up sucking and i put down fairly quickly for example and this is just one example of many um you'll notice that project wingman is not on our game of the month list uh that's a game i went into i wanted to play it but i didn't go back into it because it didn't take me very long to uh, understand what that game was and uh, realize that I didn't want to play it at all. So, um, yeah, I, I don't I don't find myself often going into games I don't want to play. Um, and, that, yeah, just, you know, if I did that, this would be like a job, you know? Yeah, I wish I could say that and, be, and, and have it be true. I just, there's just that so many games that, that just aren't on the level of depth that I want it to be. And, and even though they're good games in VR, they're just shit to me. You know what I mean? They're, they're in a way that I just, I want to put in my time and get in there and get my first impressions and never go back. Um, and so like it, it, in some ways it has become a job and for me, um, and that's my personal thing I'm trying to work through. So. Well, um, you know, uh, I, 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 well, you've I've told you many times off the air. You, if you don't want to play something, you shouldn't. And uh, there, there's plenty uh, of things you can do. I mean, you could still have a role here on the show if you want to keep doing the show. Um, you, you don't have to play garbage just because uh, Eric and I are playing something that you don't want. That's the reason why we decide at the front of every week. I ask you guys, you know, what you want to cover. That that's your opportunity, man, to say, you know, I really just don't want to. Well, and that's the thing. And so there has been a couple of times I've, I, you kind of guys have kind of led the, the wing and I haven't talked too much about it. And maybe I will like this. I just don't want to affect what's being covered. You know, like if, All if right. something is worth being covered and just because it's not my cup of tea or something I don't want to play doesn't mean it, it shouldn't be covered. Um, so as long right. as that's not the case, then yeah, I don't have a problem with that at all. I just, um, yeah, there's just gonna in, in, inevitably there's gonna be games that we go into that um, I've gone into to t- enough to talk about it, but it's just uh, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, that's that's my and it, I guess insight into my to my mind as far as as far as that goes. So. Well, um, again, a, a wide gamut of games that came out this month, and what you said, uh, Eric, is true. Like November is already off to a bang and start, you know, uh, we're about to talk about vampire, the masquerade justice. And that's one I put some time into today. And I had stuff from October that I really needed to get back into. And, uh, I had a, a very difficult time 
putting down that one because it just seems like the deeper you get into it, the better it gets. Yeah, that is, you know, and we're talking about, you know, deep games and games that give you, that fulfill, like, certain things that you want out of the game, and that's that's one of them. Now, I, I'm in the same boat today. Like, I meant to go back to Seventh Guest. I meant to go back into, you know, um, a couple of other games that I wanted to just refresh myself from that came out early in October, and I, and I, and I've played a lot of Vampire Justice already, um, and then... I went back in and I wanted to play more because I was just I was having fun with it, so I stayed in it a lot longer than I thought I was going to. Um, the same thing happened to me with Foundation the other day. I wanted to go in and just play a couple of more chapters in Foundation, and you know for whatever reason this game I know it's not for everybody, but it's kind of grabbed a hold of me and I just like it. So I stayed in way longer than I thought I was going to stay in for that one because I just wanted to hit like another chapter or two, and I ended up staying in it for like another three hours. So you know, or three or four hours. So I, there's just there's certain games resonate with you and you want, you want to stay in them longer. And, you know, I'm glad that we can still do that because now we can talk about Vampire, you know, Masquerade Justice today a little bit more. And then, you know, maybe we can, you know, we're going to hit on the other ones too, right? Like I, I kind of like these combo shows because we do get to hit on some games and then we can recap some other games that we've had a chance to get back into, um, you know, maybe on a, on a, on a deeper basis, you know, than we did in the, in the original. Perfect case in point uh, from Techno Glitch says Power Wash Simulator Game of the Month. <laughs> so this this is this is exactly what I'm talking about. Um, Eric came to us a couple of days ago, and I guess you must have just gotten the key for Power Wash Simulator, and you were asking us if we wanted to cover it, and fuck no, I don't want to cover that. And it's <laughs> this is a popular game, right? A lot of yeah. people are interested in it. A lot of people say it's good. A lot of people like it. I don't want to fucking play that game, man. Um, and I th I'm pretty sure we're on the same page here, Roots. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Might be, I mean, not that it's not a bad, a good game from what people say. I, I lost interest as soon as GT said that, or alluded to the fact that the DLC, which was the best part of the game, wasn't coming to VR. What? Like, why do I want to play the, the worst part of the game? I, I just don't understand that. That, that. I'm kind of disappointed in that. I don't even care about the game. I just, like, give us the full fucking game. Why are we the, like, the, the hand-me-downs in VR? Like, it just I can't imagine. Me. I'm sorry, but I, can't, I just can't imagine anything in the world that they could put a DLC in <laughs> for me to clean. SpongeBob. You could clean <laughs> SpongeBob's How I, I get it. Like, I don't, I don't think that. I don't want to power wash anything, a goddamn thing. But yeah. if everybody that's so excited, like GT was so excited about that DLC. And then as soon as I found out it wasn't coming, I just, I feel let down. I feel like that's my biggest gripe about VR in the last year or so. As we start to get closer and we get in these games like Vampire Masquerade, which is amazing. Um, like there's other games that are amazing flat and, and we don't get to experience that. We get the, the watered down version. And we're the better platform. Like, I don't get it. It just fucking pisses me off. Anyway. Well, the, the thing with the, the Power Wash Simulator game, too, is it's way better in VR than it is flat. I mean, who, so I actually did play this game. And to be honest, I don't hate it. I won't go back to it. But I, I get I understand the hook now for this game. Like, there is a bit of a like, I don't know. There's, there's something that it like. It, it it feels good when you're doing it i guess it's just super boring to me and it's like it's just it's like almost monotonous but i do get why people like because i got into it and i started cleaning this backyard and i was like well now i need to finish it like i've started but now i want to finish it and literally like the second board the second level it puts you in this backyard takes you like an hour and a half like oh, literal Jesus. time to clean this damn thing and it's like clean it takes forever and i was like dude i need to get out of here um but i was like I really want to finish this backyard now. So there's something about this game that kind of just hooks you a little bit, but I get it. Like, I, but I, I couldn't imagine playing this flat to me. It would be mind numbingly ridiculous to click my little mouse to be pressure washing. At least I have fucking camera. <laughs> <laughs> at least, uh, <laughs> at least when VR, when you're pulling the trigger of the pressure washer, you actually feel like you're holding a pressure washer you know what i mean so it's, you get something out of it um but yeah it's just it's so boring the game like to me and it's like monotonous like because to complete the level guys you have to find like 
the littlest, tiniest speck of like dirt that you forgot, like on the underside mm. of like a chair that's on a deck. And I'm like, I, who wants to do that? Like, I don't want to go searching for a piece of dirt so I can clean it. You know, the, the actual cleaning part is, I guess it's like, it's almost like soothing or like it gives you like a, I don't know. I can't even explain it what it is. I thought I was going to absolutely just like dog shit hate this game. And I just, I don't, I'm not going to go back to it, but I don't like hate it. You didn't, did, did you go out and rent a power washing machine, start doing your house? I should have. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I've, it'll make me feel a whole bunch better. I don't want to <laughs> power wash my house anymore now than I did before <laughs> because I played this game. So, so, uh, we politely declined Eric's offer for a key for this game. And you know what happened the next day, Roots? Hmm. This fucking th this guy emailed me and gave me a key. So, <laughs> did you go in? <laughs> no, I hell no, I didn't go in. You I, I thanked him right kindly. I'm not. I'm, uh, well, maybe you know what? Maybe before we do game of the month next month, I might give it ten minutes, mm. but probably not. What about um, a um, real time review? That would be riveting. Uh, I think we'd probably uh, lose wow. subs. We hey, we can co-op it too. You can <laughs> you can co-op. Oh can god, in there. that changes everything. Look, Three and this people? is what I said. This is what I said too. Like if you if you had this is like one of those games like uh, real VR fishing. If you had two people in there and they actually allowed you to have music in there or something like that or YouTube video where you could just go in and with somebody and hang out and like you know have fun. It would probably be something that a lot of people would do. Like mm. co-op, I guess you know always helps things. It's just. The problem is, is like they don't do the co-op right. Like I don't think, like I, I, all you hear, there's no, there's really no music. All you hear is the sound of like the water pressure washing, and that just gets monotonous and boring. And you know, I told him this at Gamescom. So did Skiva. Like, why don't you put music in here? Let me go in and let, let me go in and put my own music, and just go out and go in and chill. You know what I mean? And like, you know, super like relax and just do the whole thing. You know, you want it like what you want to do. I guarantee it would be way more popular that way. Mm. Yeah. I agree. We have uh, we've had a Tiffany sighting, ladies and gentlemen. Tiffany uh, with the fifty dollar super chat says, "I love virtual strangers, and I've been a fan of your honesty and respect for each other. We need your hot takes. Thank you, Tiffany, for the support. Uh, you're amazing, and you're awesome, and I miss you. So uh, yeah. thank you for stopping by, Absolutely. and uh, thanks for the donation. If awesome. you want to go play some pressure washer." <laughs> Simulator. <laughs> I think every time I think of Tiffany, I think a walkabout mini golf now, because uh, I don't know. Especially that interview. If you haven't seen that interview, it's like one of the best real time review. Or I guess not real time awesome. review. That's uh, on location interviews that we've done. Yeah. So. Agreed. We had a good time with Tiffany. We always have a good time with Tiffany. Um, so yeah, miss you. Hope to get to play something with you soon. Thank you for the support. Uh, you're awesome um anyway we've got just a, a jam packed show uh full of games to talk about here i mean let's see here we've got four seven eight uh 16 20 22 games on uh, on the docket today along with about uh 10 or so viewer comments to get to so why don't we say hello to our friends in chat so we can get this thing underway um if i lose it, is here uh tiffany where you just said hello to but hello again tiffany virtual slayer cat is with us as is hooked worm the hoosier game cat rogue tr is here um techno glitch is here as well et 2k9 now uh tatum's here what's up tatum escape portal is here what's up we have alex going? alex vr sighting says he hey, loves what's us. up we'll alex we love you too, Alex. You hear the you hear um, the news Alex has put out there that he hmm. is now the official MC and host oh, of the VR Awards. That's fucking awesome. He deserves it. Congratulations! Agreed. I can't think of anybody more that deserving than that. Um, I agree you, with that. Al Alex is the most prolific host uh, that I know. Like he he that guy is a legit professional host, and uh, I can if I had to pick most. one person. One person to 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 do a job like that, uh, that that would be the guy. So, congratulations, Alex. You absolutely deserve it. Yep. Oh yeah. Um, Chinatown D's up. What's up? She says she want, kind of wants to try it. You know who else kind of wants to try it? <laughs> My mom. Uh -huh. She wants to try it and everything else. That's right. <laughs> 
Uh, what's up, Mr. Lord Beavis? Le cool guy is here. Uh, well, was here. That's so awesome. went went to bed. Uh, I take photographs is here. Says woo, a new virtual stranger show. I know, right? Yeah. It's exciting. Roy Schwartz is here. Um, who else? Gabriel 004, the license to meow game cat. Hello. Who else? Black Magic 82. Black Magics. What's up? JH is here. Um, Looper's here. What's up, Looper? VR Pigeons is not on the docket this month. Sorry, Looper. We can't put every game as a nominee. Yeah. I, I, I appreciate your help making sure that I don't mm -hmm. forget stuff. But, uh, yeah, there, there is a certain standard that we have before to uh, place games on there. And I know people are going to throw that back up in my face when they see some of the games that we actually did put on here. So you're um, saying VR Pigeons isn't up to that standard? Because I can only, I, I have know nothing about this game, but the name alone just intrigues me. Because, I, you know, everybody loves Pigeons, right? Who doesn't? <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying it's a bad game. I'm saying that this is one of those power wash simulator games that I just, mm. I don't, I don't want to find out. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I, I know um, what you mean 100%. There's indie games out there that are amazing, and then there's indie games out there that may be amazing, but we'll never find out because I don't care about that game. So. Exactly. Uh, John Savino. Hi. Um, let's see. Who else is here that we haven't said hello to? Like Michelle B., for example, or Not Sure Brondo, uh, or Flame Hat the Game Cat. Radio Runt. What's up, Radio Runt? Um, mm. He's mentioning that in, in, in lieu of the fact that we've been talking about the crap games. <laughs> He's saying don't put VR pigeons on there. Yeah, I agree. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah, good point. J Devil, what's up? Chris9989. Old Darth. Yo. My Jive. VR Spry Guy. Happy birthday. And Four Wheeling. And that is as high as my chat will allow me to go. If I missed you, I apologize. Did we have any slippies today? We besides had several Alex? You know, slippies, actually. You know who we should shout out, though, who says he doesn't comment much, but he watches all of our shows. What? And we got a chance to play with him last night. You remember oh, yeah. his name, Wes? I don't remember his name, yeah. but we should definitely Cra shout him out. Yeah, Crazy and Raisin. What's up, Crazy Raisin and Raisin? Raisin. What's up? Cra What's Crazy up? and Raisin is a, uh, is a lurker, someone who watches but doesn't comment much. And uh, when Roots was having a difficult time getting in the game last night, uh, Crazy and Raisin took your place, Roots. Oh, well, that's awesome. He, I'm glad I had a hard time getting in then. Cause, uh, yeah, that was cool. We got a chance to meet. He, yeah, you got a chance to meet. He came in, played a little Dungeons of Eternity with us, and told us he, you know, he likes all, he loves all the shows. He watches them all the time. Uh, maybe not all of them live, but uh, he watches all of their stuff. So, Well, let me ask yeah. you this, Crazy and Raisin, because MASH didn't know, and I thought he would know. Do you know what this is? Because I know what it is. Um, mash. I That's a silicone had... wafer. <laughs> it is. Like. That's what it I'm gonna like. eat it, dude. Um, I thought you had an i9 before, right? Didn't you, or did that not come in one of these things? It did not, because it uh, did. I I bought it separately. I I I had my computer dude buy it, so I didn't even see what the box looked like. Well, I'll tell you what. And they're already doing sales on for pre Black Friday. I don't know if you have a Micro Center, but Micro Center motherboard, DDR5, and processor for a hundred dollars more than the processor would be by itself there which 6.99 nice. instead of 5.98 or 5.89 so uh it's like getting the motherboard for free yeah micro center's awesome if you yeah. have one local to you yeah that's a really good deal uh slippies quadzilla uh arlen kundert we have always lived in castle mary cat uh wild hour the game cat and fifth 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 is here uh and i think that's everyone uh thanks for hanging out guys and ladies uh thanks for staying up thanks for joining us and thanks for coming to help us play game of the month but before we get to that we owe you guys some game impressions because this past week fast travel games put out vampire the masquerade justice this game launched on um, 
Meta Quest as well as PlayStation VR 2. Um, again, we'd like to thank our friends at Fast Travel Games for providing us with review access on both platforms. And of course, we'd like to shout out Gamertag VR for providing B roll uh, as usual. Thank you, GT. We appreciate you, brother. Um, so, yeah, th this. Uh, this one of a few uh, recent offerings from Fast Travel Games as a developer. You know, Fast Travel Games is very uh, active in the VR space these days, but it's often as a publisher, uh, helping other um, studios bring titles to uh, to the store. Uh, but this one a little bit different. This one, um, this one coming from their studio. And this is a bit of a different game than we've seen from them before. Which, you know, that isn't such a strange thing to say, Eric. Because Fast Travel Games, if there's one thing that we've come to realize about them, it's that every title that they put out is very different from the last one, isn't it? Yeah, they're not afraid to try different things. Like, that's what I love about Fast Travel. I mean, they they kind of like, they're, they are, they're not like pigeonholed into one like genre or one thing. They They definitely are like, looking to innovate and do different stuff. And, uh, you know, that's one of the things I absolutely love about them, whether that, whether that's in what titles they decide to publish or whether that's in some of the games that they decided to, you know, to develop in house. Um, you know, I love what they do. And this one is definitely different than, pre I mean, I guess it's, it's, you know, the, the, I guess the premise of the game itself is not, is something we've seen before, but the whole entire atmosphere and feel to it is different. Yeah. At roots, I, I kind of feel that this game has the bones of Wraith the Oblivion Afterlife. And I don't know if you noticed it when you were in there, but there's a lot of the same feels going on here. There's, it's a very similar art style, a similar tone, which, you know, that makes sense because they both take place in the same universe, right? The, uh, uh, I forget the name off the top of my head um, uh, of this universe. Um but I mean, uh, there's a lot of same visual effects that the UI is very similar, but it's a very, uh, well, even like the way the story kind of is structured is similar to, to rate the oblivion afterlife. But with that said, um, just infinite more depth to the gameplay loop here versus a game like Wraith, Right. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing is, is, you know, I, I haven't played probably as, as deep into this, or maybe I have, I don't know. Uh, but it just seems like no matter how far I play in, there's just something new being added to the gameplay. Like every time I turn around, which is what I want. And some fucking amazing things. Like I, I, that, I that portal, <laughs> I put it underneath the person and this thing comes out and grabs the person <laughs> and, and yanks them down. And, the, you know, it's like it takes, there's so many different things going on in here. I mean, one of the main things here is is stealth, but you don't have to be stealth. Um, it just depends on the situation, right? And how much energy you have and, and if you're worn down and and there's just so many things going on. And so at least for me, so many things going on in, in my mind and, and how I'm going to approach it. It 100% depends on on where I am um, in my, my stamina bar, right? So I, I just, I so far I'm really digging this game and um, I can't wait to get back in there. Eric, what Root's saying here is, is absolutely the strength of the game. Uh, it, it's the the variety of not only weapons but abilities that they give you, um, and it and what it basically does is it allows you the freedom to play this game how you want. Now it is at its core a stealth game, and no matter which way you decide to go, there's always some element of stealth at play. Um, but you don't have to be completely stealthy with it. it. It's kind of, you can if you want to. They they certainly reward you for it if you decide to play that way. That You'll, you'll end up um, getting achievements, which grant you more XP points, which allow you to upgrade your uh, skill tray a lot faster. Uh, but you don't have to do that. If you want to be a little bit more forceful and a little more evil, they give you all the tools and abilities that you need to just kind of plow through it, right? Yeah, I love it. And, you know, one of the things I'll say about that and, and, and the things that Roots was like kind of alluding to of like, you know, what you can do as a vampire. I love the way that they bring it to you. Like they, there's a lot of stuff to do here. Like there's a lot of stuff to learn. There's a lot of different ways 
that you can kill and that you can, you know, use the lifeblood of your enemies to help, you know, sustain you and make you stronger. But they don't give that to you all in one tutorial right up front. Like, I love the way they do it here. Like, you know, the things that Roots is talking about, this, like, this portal that comes up out of the ground, you don't learn that until, you know, your third mission or fourth mission into the game or something like that. So you don't, they, a lot of these games when they're deep like this, they're like, okay, I need to get you everything you need to know, like within the first two minutes of the game. And they overload you with stuff and to, to where you feel like you're, because there's so much here that I think if they give it to you up front, you would feel a little bit intimidated with this game because it's so much here. There's so much to learn and you will die a lot early on. So if they gave it, I think it could get frustrating. Like if they, if they, if they didn't do it right. And I think they did it right here because there is so much here it is so deep that they did the tutorial stuff right give it to you in small doses let you learn as you go to where you get into the game and then you really do start to feel like a freaking badass vampire that you can do a lot of different stuff and like what Wes said i mean there's so many ways to kill here like there's there's ways to kill silently and there's ways to kill you know multiple enemies at one time there's ways to almost trap enemies and bring them in that there are so many different play styles here that you can do whatever you want. And then I love that, you know, you can get more experience points to help bolster, your, bolster yourself between your missions because you will need it as well. So I do like the depth in that too. One of my favorite aspects of the game, Roots, um, is are the maps, the exploration. And, it, and it, it's... It's a combination of things. First of all, it looks wonderful. It looks awesome. Uh, being in Venice, they picked the perfect setting uh, for a game like this. You know, if you're an immortal being uh, and you're kind of trying to work your way up through the ranks of other immortals, you, you want to do that in the old world. So they picked the perfect spot in Italy to do so. And it's absolutely beautiful. Even though this, you know... This is a game that's built around console and, and standalone VR. Um, they do a very good job of optimizing it and pick the right art style to allow it to be beautiful without being photo real. But in addition to that, um, these maps, you know, despite this being a very linear game, you know, you're going from point A to point B, the, there are branching paths that aren't always obvious. Um, it's a very vertical map. You know, these, these buildings have multiple floors. And if you have a kind of an eagle eye, you can often find other ways around just by looking up, kind of climbing or teleporting your way around and uh, coming at it from another direction. And the, the game almost always rewards you um, for, for finding these alternate routes by uh, allowing you to find collectibles. And the collectibles, they're not just collectibles. They're that they give you XP again to help you uh, level your character and your abilities up, and they also all of them give you a bit more of the story, uh, which is probably the strength of the game. Yeah, the story is amazing, and just uh, I don't know, just for me, it's just going around and I was gonna say, um, just going around and 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 killing people. I don't know, but I did, I did. So far, I've really have enjoyed the the story and and how it's being told. And, um, yeah. Do, do you see the comparisons, Eric, to, uh, to, to Wraith the Oblivion? It's like, it's like Wraith the, the Oblivion is a very basic version of what they have going on here. Like, the art and the scenery is the same. The, the UI is very similar. The storytelling is almost identical. But what they've done is they've added layers of gameplay on top of it and depth with the uh, XP system, all of the combat. Uh, the, the stealth is still kind of there, something that came over from Wraith, uh, but there's more of it here, way more enemies. And uh, again, uh, the, the combat and kind of depth of the progression is what really sets us apart from a, a game like Wraith. Yeah, I, I'd absolutely feel you know see the the comparisons to wraith and you know i think they kind of like learned a few lessons with this one from from wraith like you know wraith was a good game but it, it, it was imperfect and people had some criticisms of it because of you know there wasn't as much to do there you know i think they relied too much on stealth and there wasn't as much there and here i think you have a lot there's so much that you can do here there's different like i said there's different ways to you know to, to kill enemies even to the point where you can melee 
And you, you can you can melee, you know, here efficiently too. Like, you know, you can you can feel like a badass just meleeing, jumping around, you know, with this little quick um you know, this quick uh, movement system that they have to like instantly get right up on in, you know in an enemy's face and then just like melee the crap out of them and then you know without having to use any of these you know um you know vampire powers that you have so there's just so many different ways you can do it now and you know and you know being either on the ground or on the rooftops or finding like you said finding different paths um i went and found a couple of different paths where i found objects that i could have for my uh for my like my hideout that i didn't even realize until like my third playthrough like I didn't even know that was a part of the game until I had gotten yeah. into like the third playthrough. I found a room. I don't know. It was just a. It was a room off of a balcony. Um, that I, it, all the only thing that was in it was like um. It was, I don't remember what it was. It was like a. It was like, I don't know, like a teacup or a tea tea set or something like that. But that goes to you know like you know your hideout and all of a sudden you have all these collectibles that you can find and hide and that you know it was just it's just super cool and it gives you a lot more to do in here. So I would absolutely see where they 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 took that you know, race the oblivion afterlife kind of like framework and made it into the, into a better game. And I think this isn't the last one we're going to see from, from that kind of like either that play style or that framework. But even in this, this, this universe, I think we're going to see more now from them. World of darkness, I think is what it's That's called. It. The universe yep. world of darkness. How, um, how cool was that? It is that, um, that teleport move that you're talking about mash that like the, you know, there's teleports in a lot of games, but the way they do this, and the way you use it is so cool. And the way it just makes you feel like you're really like this mist going, get crossing barriers. But then you also can use it as attack, right? Like you see the shadow of your guy ready to jump on the person. And I think just that alone, it just, I, I feel like there's so many little bits like that that just kind of take the game up a notch. Um, I just was really impressed with that aspect of it as well. Were you, yeah, were, they, you, were you guys surprised when they added in the uh, the little hand crossbow? Like, I mean, it was just a, like a, I thought it was a little bit of an odd choice, but it, it did work pretty well. Um, yeah, and it, it isn't just uh, a you know a regular crossbow either. They give you different kinds of bolts for it, mm -hmm. and it, it isn't really uh, an offensive weapon entirely. I mean, like the original bolt, bolt they give you for it is really mainly used to give you access to new areas and then the second bolt is like a, a tranquilizer so you can you can use that how you want you can trank people up and kill them or you can trank them up and get around them so again it isn't kind of dictating uh the play style to you even if you decide to use it it's still kind of up to you uh which way you go with it um damn it I forgot where I was going to go with I was, that. What, before, what do you What do you guys think about the ability choices? Like uh, at least the first one, you have the choice when you get a point, you get to choose uh, what the first choices uh, between two. You can either get more sustenance from the the rat because you know you do get into situations and don't judge me where I had to eat several rats because <laughs> um, I'm out of energy, bro, and there's no people. And um, or the other one was you could have more intimidation with people, and you could mm -hmm. like potentially uh intimidate somebody instead of having to kill them and it can like change the outcome of things and i thought that was super cool um i haven't really had too much opportunity to to use it very much because i feel like killing everybody in fantastical <laughs> ways but um and i want to suck cool. their blood man i really really want to suck their that sounds crazy creepy but um they really give you a very good need to want to um do what vampires do which is cool i got I got my intimidation level up to level two now. Did you really? I'm, yeah, because I leveled that one right away. I, yeah, and it, yeah, <laughs> and it, and it does change the outcomes too because it. I don't know if you guys if you were able to do it anyway, but I, I was able to like intimidate one guy into giving me a painting. Ooh. That was uh, another thing that I was able to gain this this rare painting that's now going to go into the hideout. Um, so mash, it, listen to the mash. This man legitimately <laughs> thinks I could get a painting mash. I could do you it. Should, too. You should have went with you. See, you went with the rat <laughs> sucking blood thing, and I went with the intimidation. Damn it! Intimidation. Yeah. <laughs> I also went with uh, intimidation, Did and you? I too am I'm, I'm on level two intimidation nice. now. Nice. Um, but the, these collectibles, and you're right. Uh, using the intimidation uh, will uh, open up alternate paths for you, and like I mentioned before, these alternate paths often have collectibles in them like Mash is talking about, and they do get stored in your hideout. 
Um, but there are three different types of collectibles that you can find. And they all three, again, they're not just collectibles. They all have a, uh, a voice clip that plays when you grab them and pick them up. And you can take those into your hideout. And they're all kind of laid out for you in sequence. And you can go down the line kind of listening to the, uh, the voice clips. And it, again, kind of tells the story. Uh, one of them tells your story. The other one tells the story of uh, one of your uh, companions, one of your friends in the game. And I don't, I don't remember exactly what the, uh, the, the third line of uh, collectibles do. But it all adds just kind of a lot more depth to the, uh, the game world. Uh, but what you're talking about, Roots, with the um, having to eat rats, that um, hunger that you feel as a vampire is really where most of the game's challenge, at least in the early part, comes from. Because, uh, as we mentioned before, that they really equip you with a lot of uh, skills and abilities. And you're very powerful. Like, you can, you can dispatch of... Uh, of enemies fairly easily but you can't just go around willy-nilly doing it over and over again because every time you use your abilities it, it raises your hunger meter up and you have to feed so there's constantly this balance at play of you know how you can be offensive w without completely famishing yourself or should you just go stealth and even some of your stealth abilities uh, make you more hungry um, so again there's just a constant kind of strategy going on uh, to kind of dictate your gameplay and that's the beauty of it like a lot of these games that give you these choices to be offensive or stealthy you kind of make your choice at the front of the game and you play your way through it um, it isn't like that here it's a give and take so you, you'll decide to be stealthy in certain parts you'll decide to be more offensive in certain parts and it really comes down to uh the amount of food at the end of the day that's in the area uh, that you have access to um although that's... i gotta say eric I, I don't i don't like eating uh too many of the rats if i don't have to <laughs> they, they smell funny they are they do smell they funny <laughs> i i i feel weird though like Okay, so you're going, because like you said, there, there's food everywhere. But people, like, I have this feeling, because even I caught myself this. Like, they're way, I feel like I was wasting food. Like, I, you know what I mean? I do this attack yeah. from far away, and then that fucker goes flying. And I'm like, oh, no, like, I want to eat that guy. Like, that's one of the things I wish I could do in fast travel games. If there, Maybe it's something that comes. I'd love to come jump from afar. And then suck their blood, man. I don't want to immediately kill them because, like, that is, it's like taking a sandwich and just throwing it on the ground. That's just not cool. Yeah. Uh, you know, in today's day and age, who wants to waste blood? <laughs> That's right. Know? It's a waste. <laughs> you shouldn't spill blood. You should drink it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm very impressed with this game. Um, now, I, I will say this. I played this game uh, only on PSVR 2 mm. so far. Have either of you uh, been able to check out the standalone version of this game yet? I only... This is going to surprise you guys. Well, maybe it won't. I only played it on the Quest 2. Uh, oh, really? I, yeah, because I don't have access to the of show account on my Quest Pro yet because I had to wipe wow. it after six hours of why can't my... Won't my link cable connect? Uh, even though it was just connecting five seconds ago. Um, and that was part of the solution was wiping my... Well, that's Meta's, always Meta's fucking solution. Just wipe your <laughs> your your headset. So yeah, I, had, I played it on the Quest 2. And it's actually I very surprisingly um, looked really good and played good. Um, I don't know what it looks like on anything else, but it looked really good. So. I played it on both, but I mainly played it on the, on the Quest 3. Like, uh, just because right, uh, okay. I was away, I was away for the weekend and I put a, a lot of time into it last night, um, you know, away from my PC and my, my PlayStation. So I played it mainly on Quest 3 and then I had a little bit of time in PlayStation just to see it. Okay. Uh, did you experience any kind of, uh, jank? Because my, my experience was quite good, but it was not perfect. I did not, but I had didn't probably play it as extensively as you did. I majority of the time I spent, and it was with the Quest Three, even with the demo, 
Uh, when I did the demo, I played mainly on the Quest 3 and then a little bit on the, on the PlayStation uh, back in Gamescom. And then even, like I said, this time I played mainly on the Quest 3. But I did not see any jank at all on the, on the, on the what PlayStation. What was your what jank? Kind of, what kind of jank did you have? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't anything major. Um, the kind of uh, interactions weren't perfect. Like sometimes I would go to grab something and it wouldn't quite grab it or it would get stuck in it. Like if something were laying on a table. Uh, so, so for those of you who don't know, this game uses the uh, Half-Life Alex system of picking things up. You can kind of toss things to yourself and catch it out of the air. And that works pretty well. Uh, but if you decide not to do that and just pick something up off the table, oftentimes it'll just stick to the table and you really have to jerk really hard to pull it up off the table. Um, other times I would come into a room and there would be open drawers with like broken bottles and plates inside the drawer. And I would go to close the drawer and it would close fine. But whatever's inside the drawer would just stay there floating in midair. Um mm. Again, stuff that's not like game breaking or anything, but stuff that you notice. Uh, something else I noticed, and I found this to be very strange. Um, they claim that the game runs at 120 hertz native on PlayStation VR 2. Um, but I swear, when I strafe... I see, re I, I see reprojection. I mm. see there's there, there's a visual artifact going on that looks to me like reprojection. And if it's not, I don't know what it could be. Like, it, it's very visible when, um, when uh, the subtitles are up on the screen. And you don't even have to str strafe. You can just move your head like this. The, the letters double, and they mm. vibrate, and, and the, they jitter. Um how weird almost constantly and yeah again nothing game breaking and uh it's something you get used to pretty quickly but again they said that this game is running at native 120 um well either they're lying it, or they're wrong because you your yeah, eyes aren't yeah. lying you know what i mean yeah so i but i um, I, I, will, I will say wes um now that you mention it I did and I didn't have issues with grabbing stuff off the table because once I realized it wasn't as cut and dry as grabbing, like I had a couple issues where I would try to grab something and I I just assumed, well, I guess I have to grab magnet hand everything. So I just started <laughs> grabbing everything that way, even if I was right next to it um, to avoid it. It was my like a workaround and I didn't even realize I had done it. Um, I just now that I think about it, I, I I've evidently um, just started doing it that way after the first time I had issues trying to grab something. So there yeah, is. most of the time that's what you do. You, you kind of program yourself how to work around these problems, and uh, I very much did the same. Uh, again, none of this stuff was, was a big problem, um, but I just you know we're doing a review here, and just for the sake of being uh, complete. Uh, I thought I would mention some of the issues that I had with the game. None of it got in the way of me enjoying the game thoroughly. I, re I really enjoyed my uh, time in this game. And if time allows, uh, if November allows me, I will definitely be returning to this game to uh, to try to get some more time in it and hopefully even finish it um, before we do Game of the Month next month. Yeah. Uh, um, let's see. What is this game? $30? Let, let me see. I think it's a $30 game. Hookworm the Hoosier Game Cat says they had to turn the subtitles off for PSVR 2, I'm assuming, for the same reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. And somebody had said earlier, too, that they thought, uh, I can't remember who it was, but uh, it was J Devil who said uh, they thought they kind of held your hand a little bit too much. And the, uh, you know, you can, they have a hint system that you can use. You can actually just turn that off in the menu, too. The, the menu allows you to ask you, do you want to have the hint system on or off and I turned it off because I don't want to be able to know you know like where the next path is or where I need to go next so just turn it off for sure yeah and then they they they're a little heavy on the tutorial messages at the, in the first two um in, in the first two chapters but after that it thins out a little bit and so it's, it's not so in it's, your face you're not talking about like the arrows and all that stuff for that special ability are you no, no. Okay. I think they're talking about the question mark signs that pop up. Oh, I gotcha. I kind gotcha. of tell you okay. what you need to do. 
But yeah. there is, it, yeah, it, you can turn off, though, where they give you hints on, like, where the next obje- objective is, though, as well. Um, I like the waypoints. You know, yeah, the waypoint where it tells you, like, where you're supposed to go in the environment. You can turn that off, too, to where mm-hmm. it, you know, it'll still give you the hearts of the, like, the enemies around you, so you still have that. But you know how it gives you that little waypoint or that little objective marker, like where your direction is supposed to go. They can take that away too, and makes you it makes you have to actually go through and find out oh, where you need to go. Fuck that! I need to know where to go, <laughs> Mash. <laughs> You're trying to send me in there without a map, dude. What are you doing? No map. It's crazy. No map. <laughs> Colossus says might be black smear. No, it's it's not black smear. It's a very clear doubling of. I mean, it looks it sounds like reprojection. It looks like, re- yeah, it looks like reprojection is what it looks like. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know what it is. If this is 120 native, then they've got something going on that looks exactly like reprojection. Um, but again, it's, 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 it's more with like the text and stuff than like um, the world itself, which is the weird thing. What'd you guys think of the, um, the menu system and everything? I, I thought, I pretty much thought everything that they did in this was, was done well. The menu system, yep. the the inventory, the map, um, it was just it. And you play so many games where there's misses in so many areas, and then you get into something, and like everything is just like they're hitting everything really good. And um, I I just really enjoyed my time so far in this. I would definitely yeah. recommend I, it. I agree. This is a legitimate next gen VR title. Um. This is what we expect now. This, 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 these, this is what standalone VR should be in the next generation, right? Like, or when I say the next generation, I mean this generation that we're entering. Um, the, again, this this isn't from a AAA studio. This is from a fairly large indie, um, but it's not a AAA studio. It doesn't have like multiple millions of dollars into it. This, uh, this is what we expect now from games and now of course not every game is going to be on this level of quality um but i think that most games that i'm going to want to put any kind of time into uh in the next year to two years needs to have a similar level of depth to the gameplay that this has to it and just general polish and quality um i mean uh, the, you know Eric, the the first generation and over the last couple of years, uh, developers have have gotten pretty good at blaming um, the lack of polish their games have and lack of depth on that standalone processor. Um, You can't really do that anymore, right? Yeah, I mean, they're gonna a lot of the developers are gonna lose this crutch of you know just can't be happening or can't be done and or you know I'm not moving it over because I don't want to dumb down the game I have. I mean that that crutch is kind of gone now and. It's it's shown in the Quest 3. I mean, when you see this thing um, in the Quest 3, especially some of those nighttime scenes, when you're on the rooftops looking around that, the, you know, the city of Venice and look at the look at the sky and look at, you know, the architecture and look at it as a as a Quest 3 standalone title. This is one of those games that will you, you, you it makes you step back and go, wow, this looks really good. How did they do this, you know, on a uh, on a mobile chip and you know and that. I, those statements are going to be starting to become fewer and far between because we're it, it's this is going to be the like this should be the standard now it's probably not going to be the standard yet because there's going to be a lot of developers that just don't take advantage of it but it should be now um because it, this the, the game this is the gaming that we deserve um for this headset now i'll one up you on that eric i played this on the quest too and it looked fucking amazing on it as well like and this is last gen's you know that that's not even the new headset so like uh, it, there, there really was, and I, and I knew because I played Shadowgate as well. I've played several games on the Quest Two platform that were phenomenal, and like, I just feel like it that 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 excuse was not really valid ever. Um, it just was an excuse, and now it's but certainly it's, not over the the last uh, year to eighteen months. Like we, we've seen some really impressive things done um, since Meta kind of added in their newest optimizations and, and got the, really the most out of that uh, XR2 chip. Um, well, we've seen some great games, and we're going to talk about some more of them before the end of this episode. Um, but for this one, um, $30. And, and again, for those of you who don't know or maybe you haven't watched our channel very much in the past, uh, this is not a full game review. 
we we th these are impressions we we played uh you know a few hours at the front end of the game and, and we're telling you what we think based on what we've got in it so far um but honestly um I feel like thirty dollars for a game like this, assuming that it goes on for you know eight to ten hours, I think thirty dollars is kind of a steal for a game of this quality level. Um, Roots, what do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I would say even if it was like five hours, I wouldn't like it to be five hours. But I mean, the quality level, the depth, um, everything about it, the storytelling so far is amazing. I don't expect that to get any worse, and so like. I, I would say that this game is, is definitely a thirty dollar game all day long, um, for sure. Yeah, I'd say there there isn't really a category that the game lacks in, right? Like it looks good, it sounds good, the voice acting's great, the the story's deep and and nuanced, uh the gameplay's varied, uh, it has a great progression system, it's fun to play, no matter whether you're being stealthy or being aggressive. Um, it's just good all around. Uh Eric, thirty bucks, what do you think? All day long this is a deep game um in, in a, a very cool universe where it gives you it makes you feel like a badass of being a vampire and we just don't have a ton of these games like this you know no, there's not a lot of vampire games to be honest um out there so i mean this is a great game that you know this 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 is worth 50 bucks or 60 bucks like i mean ghostbusters is 50 bucks worth of dlc i mean what i mean <laughs> this game is so much we'll more. get the ghostbusters yeah. we'll, 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 i know you can't wait eric to, to shit on <laughs> ghostbusters just give us a few minutes we'll get there no no, no. i don't I, I love that game <laughs> you're right um <laughs> roots uh radio Root says uh this game's not for him he don't like vampires uh this wouldn't want th okay this is the thing um i could see somebody like if you're not into vampires and you're not into like the idea of sucking blood like I, you know, I, I love God. I'm not into in real life, but I mean, come on, it's a game. Um, it's a but, game. <laughs> it's right. a game. Um, but you know, like I, I feel like it's one of the best vampire games that I played. And and you're right. There's not many, or Mash is right. There's not many vampire games out there, even flat. Um, and I don't think I think this is the only one I know of in VR. Um, so yeah, I I would recommend it, Radio Run. I think you would like it, but I mean. I don't know. You might just be, he's sick right now. So maybe that's why he's just like mm. preemptively saying he doesn't like it. Uh, Hooksworm said he saw green, green cracks in the water. I didn't mm. notice it. Did, did either of you? I did not. And I was on the quest either. too. So, um, nope. I don't know. Um, yeah. Uh, it's a shame. I feel bad for radio rump because there's been so many great games, but, uh, most of the really, really best ones have had kind of a darkness to them, and he just isn't into any of that at all. And he, he just won't, he won't even try. He won't try Resident Evil. He won't try Saints and Sinners. He won't try uh, this. And uh, I feel bad for him because th those are among the very best games that uh, he's, VR has had this year. Well, he's not into horror. You got to look at it this way, Radio Run. You're like, so you don't like to be scared. You get to be the one to scare. You get to be the one to attack and suck blood <laughs> and like just, yeah, yeah, you just flip the script, you know. So. It's true. Some, someone was asking in the chat a minute ago if you, um, if you're turning people into vampires or if you're killing them, uh, you're killing them, but most of them are vampires. Mm. So, like, you're a vampire attacking other vampires. Uh, there are regular people that you can kill if you want but you don't have to like you don't even have to hide from them if they see you they'll just run away um it just depends if you're on hungry, if i'm hungry yeah. you can if eat I'm them hungry, yeah if i need a snack <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna eat you i'm sorry <laughs> you're right there the blood is fresh um you know like I, i'm not i would rather eat that human than the the rat the rats like you gotta eat like six rats to get enough sustenance to you know, to go on for a little bit. So it's just too much. Uh, Wild Hour Game Cat says Eric's a little low. You already have him pegged, though, don't you, Rich? Yeah, I've got him. On my end, there's nothing I can do. As a matter of fact, somebody said something that in the like the first minute of the show. <laughs> and I told him, I was like, <laughs> I was like, there's nothing I can do, you know? Um, and I no, think no, Eric's nothing, done everything on his changes. end as well. Yeah. So nothing, Nothing's different. Nothing changes. So I don't know. 
weird. I don't know. It's, it's, it's it, something it, with Ninja Eyes. That's the only thing I can think of. Yeah, you're you're loud through Discord, so yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, know. I don't know. I'm 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 still even pegging in the yellow, and and I'm looking at it right now. I'm still pegging in the yellow when I'm when I hit the highs on my my voice. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. Uh. Anyway. Um. Recommend, recommend, recommend. It's pretty universal here. This is a high quality title. Maybe the best that we've seen from Fast Travel. What do you guys think? Uh, a lot of people like Apex Construct. A lot of people like um, uh, Stellaris, uh, Ghost Signal, which we're going to be talking about shortly. Um, this is probably my favorite Fast Travel game that I've played so far. This has got the most depth. I'm not into space game type, the Stellaris type of games, you know, in general for myself. Um, I just think this has the most depth of any of the games that they've played. The storytelling, everything about it, like you said, there's not a category where it lacks. And so it's, I would definitely, if, if anything, it's definitely their most well-rounded uh, game, 100%. But I think it's their best game. Yeah, I like Stellaris a lot. I mean, that's a really, really good game. But, I mean, this, I've had probably more fun in this game um, than any other. I mean, I, I liked, you know, um, Rafe Day Oblivion Afterlife, too. and um, but yeah, I think there's so much more to this game. Like I, this is one of those games I can't wait to get back into. I want to know the story. I want to know what's going on. I want to know what other abilities I can get. I want to know like when I, when I get this skill tree completely like pegged out, like how much of a badass vampire am I going to be? And like, I'm going to, I want to see what that looks like. So I think, uh, you know, and I want to see what other environments I'm going to get into. So I'd love it I'd to yeah. see this world in the PC VR. I'm kind of, I mean, obviously I say that about every game, but kind of bummed out that there's not a, a PC version to crank up, you know? Yeah, this is a theme that we're seeing more and more of these days, and there's been quite a few of these titles um, that uh, we're going to be talking about today. Well, well, why don't we just go ahead and move right on into Game of the Month, and uh, we're, we're starting a little bit differently this month than we normally do. We're going to start with PC VR, um, just as a bit of an appetizer roots because of what we just said, like nothing comes to PC VR anymore. Like almost nothing comes to PC VR. We have three titles this month. Uh, and, and I could have made it maybe four or five if I wanted to add in early access stuff. Um, but the truth of the matter is roots is that most of these uh, games that have any kind of money behind them don't even bother to uh, release on PC anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, that's def I don't know what the hell is going on with this. Yeah, it's definitely um it's, it's a it's a sad thing if it wasn't for the um for all the the mods. I think PC VR for the most part would be dead, you know? And it's not that they that like the game some of the games that are coming out are amazing, but they're just uh they're just not you know, not all of them. So yeah. Um so okay, so it looks like our scenes got a little bit. Yeah, yeah this like, one got it's. I this one. Uh, I can go to the other one first. Oh, well, it's, it's not. Yeah, well, I think. Well, we, it, go ahead. Well, we can start on this game. This this is one of the the three, <laughs> one of the three PC VR games that came out this month. Uh, the seventh guest VR came out from uh, Vertigo Games. Vertigo Games, one of uh, uh, the few studios that are still supporting PC VR with their releases. Uh, this game did come out on all three major platforms this month, so kudos to them for that. Um, Eric, uh, a return to a uh, a PC gaming classic. So it would have been weird, right, if Seventh Guest had come out and not come out for PC because that was the platform that really put this game on the map to begin with. Yeah, and I, I I wasn't aware. I mean, I knew of it, but I never played it on PC. But I mean, a lot of people did, and a lot of people were looking forward to it. I think there was a it was a sequel called the Eleventh Something Two. Um, um, there was a, a second part of this. Um, but well, I, I, I just didn't never even know that. Yeah, yeah, there was another one that had come out also that was really popular too. Um, just wasn't a series that I was into, and th I'm not normally into games like this. So, um, you know, being that I had as much fun as I did in this game. I was really kind of shocked with this one, and uh, yeah, I'm, I, I'm absolutely loving this game. Uh, made my new top twenty-five quest game list, but uh, in PC, you know, had to be there. Yeah, so this is a story-driven uh, puzzle game, a remake of a PC gaming classic. The uh, original game was known for its use of uh, full-motion video capture. 
Uh, it was among the first, if not the first game to, to use real digital, real-time video um, in a video game. And this next generation, this remake of the game, um, does a similar thing, only this time using uh, photogrammetry, um, volumetric video, so to speak, um, which is, you know, um, Roots, it was a very uh, effective use, right? We, we really haven't seen very many games to this point that really puts you in photo real um, cutscenes with full 3D depth uh, right in front of your eyes. Th this this is what cutscenes cut scenes should look like in VR in 2023. Absolutely, and you know it's kind of fitting with you know because what they did in the first time was what like was so unique and different, right? And it was kind of uh, groundbreaking. Same thing here. And if it if that's where it ended, uh, that'd be a different story. But it doesn't like the storytelling, that like, everything about it. I, even the puzzles, I think, are are cool and fun. Um, I I think they nailed this game. You know, they could have came, they could have brought it out, they could have tried to make it, you know, a uh, a good version of it, and and failed. How many games come out and they try to bring it to VR and it just sucks. And um, I thought this was, it. like Eric said, it's it's on my top. I don't know about top twenty five. I've never made that list. Um, but I can't imagine it doesn't make it because um, it's that good. So. Yeah, yeah, the puzzle, it's, it's nice classic uh, puzzles. Uh, uh, they're not even really classic to VR. Like, uh, the, the, this is classic video game puzzling uh, in VR, of course, and, and very uh, very VR AF, so to speak. You, you do use your hands to kind of interact with the puzzles. Um, but th this game is all about the atmosphere and the story. Um, the, the puzzles are just challenging enough to, uh, make you feel like you've accomplished something. Um, but not so hard that you're going to pull your hair out, or at least they haven't been, you know, through, through what I've played of the game. Um, but Eric, uh, again, th this game is all about production value, right? Like th this comes from Vertigo games, which technically isn't a triple A studio, but I would definitely say that this is a triple A quality of game it's it the uh, production is top notch here absolutely every every bit of this feels triple a to me i mean if you're gonna look at a triple a puzzle game i mean it feels every bit as triple a as as missed and we know how big of a ip that is i mean and this i i'm i think it's right there with that um i actually like it better um so yeah i mean i i absolutely love it i mean when you see this motion captured you know acting with the with the actors this is something you haven't seen in the game in a long time. It brings it back like a nostalgic feel for me of some of the, the things in the nineties when they started doing that, um, you know, in the 80, late eighties and nineties. So I, I absolutely love this game. Um, there's a lot to it. It's well thought through. Um, some of the puzzles are maybe not the, the hardest puzzles you're going to find, but um, I do think they're well thought out and they're kind of, you know, they, it, it seems different than every cookie cutter puzzle game out there. It's fun. It's just fun. The atmosphere is uh, excellent, and it's a very immersive uh, puzzle game. One of the very best puzzle games we've played in VR, if not the best. Now, obviously, we don't like to throw out terms like that so soon after a game gets released. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if a year from now we're sitting here talking about this game as the uh, as uh, among the very best puzzle games that we've seen in VR. Yeah, I think it's better than the room VR, and everybody says that's the best game out there. Um, at least I enjoy it more than the room VR. So, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. I, I think that's a safe thing to say. I, I think it's a better game than the room so far. Mm -hmm. It seems like it's going to be. Although I have finished the room and I haven't finished this one yet, but yes. um, so far it, it seems like it's going to be a better game than the room. Yeah, agreed. Uh, anyway, a, a great uh, release for, for PC. So, again, kudos to uh, Vertigo, and our gratitude goes out to them for supporting PC VR uh, by releasing this game. And um, they're also going to be releasing Arizona Sunshine 2 on PC as well. So, again, shout out for to Vertigo for continuing to support PC VR long after most other studios have abandoned it. Yep. Uh, so, uh, Roots, I'll, I'll just let you go ahead and flip to whatever the next one you've got is, and, uh, we'll take it in whatever order you've got it. Ah. Uh, All right. So, yep. uh, so here we have, uh, NFL Pro Era 2. 
Um, this is one of the games, maybe the only game on the whole list uh, this month that I did not play. Um, I put this game on here for two reasons. Um, one, because it's a PC VR game that came out and there weren't many. There's so, three. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I put this on here so we could have three games. Um, two, because it's something somebody's heard about. Like pe people are aware of this game. Maybe not two, but people are aware of one. And I think that that's kind of the problem with this game, because even though I didn't play it, I did go uh, on Steam and read some of the reviews of this game, and they were largely negative. And what most people said was, if you own one, you don't really need two, because it's pretty much the same game, with the exception of now, um, there's multiplayer. You can play head-to-head -head with your friends. Um the problem is Roots is that the game's buggy mm. uh, and one of the biggest bugs that's currently present in the game is specifically with the multiplayer. <laughs> what is it? What's the bug? It just, uh... It's just buggy. The, the people just keep saying that it's janky and buggy. I didn't like make notes about the specific bugs, but this is just what people are saying. The multiplayer is buggy. The game itself is buggy, but especially in multiplayer. Yeah, well, here's the problem. It, it, they're right. Like, they bought the game already. They bought it, and they added multiplayer to it. Why the fuck are they selling it again and not giving yeah. the people that bought it already that feel like it should have been there to begin with? And when it came out, they, they I, I believe they, if I remember correctly, that's what they were talking about. Well, we're going to be bringing multiplayer. Yeah. Well, you're not. Not to my copy that I bought the first time. Um, so yeah, I, I can see why it's got negative reviews that it shouldn't have because they, they shouldn't be charging for it. You know what I mean? If you didn't, if you yeah. did what was right, people would be raving about it because now they can play against their friends, but now they can't because they're not going to buy it again. It's just a weird thing. I don't know. Yeah. That, that's kind of my thing with it too, Eric is like, I, I liked NFL prayer. The first one, I thought it was a pretty fun game. Uh, I'm, I am a football fan, and I enjoyed playing it. I like playing in my own team's uniform and in, on our own field, and I did want the multiplayer. Uh, but even if this game worked perfectly and there were no bugs, uh, I feel like what they're offering up here uh, is something that should have came as DLC to the original game. This, this shouldn't be a whole new $30 game that I have to go buy absolutely i mean I, I don't get this one i mean this to, to me when it came out originally it felt like it was a decent game that was just incomplete you know what i mean it was like they just didn't put everything in here that they needed to put in here and i was okay with that if as long as they were going to fulfill their promises of bringing it and then when they do that but they say basically gotta buy the game again to get it i mean that to me that's uh, they they didn't say that up front, right? <laughs> it's not like they said, oh, yeah, in our next copy, there, our next version that you're going to have to buy, we'll have all that there. They mm -hmm. intimated that you would have it with this version at some point, and that was the, that's my biggest problem with this game. Like, to me, if I would have I would have said, I would have said a lot worse about it in the beginning because I felt, I, I liked the game like Wes. I thought it was a decent game, but I thought it was a miss because it didn't have everything it needed to have in it from the beginning, like, to me, if you're going to put an NFL license on it, it needs to be a full game. Like, I want running back. I want wide receiver. I want, like, I want everything. I don't want just be the quarterback. I want to be everything. And then I want multiplayer with, with it from the from the get-go. And I think if they had all that there, it would have been a different story for this game. And to do it half-assed like this, it just makes it worse. It's what I was saying earlier. We we get to get the these type of games light. We get VR light. You know, here's a, an NFL game. We're not going to give you a running back. We're not going to give you this. We're not going to give you that. We're not going to give you multiplayer, except for in a, in a sequel. J Devil says, this is just how sports games work. New games come out every year, and it never changes. I agree, and I disagree, because in those games, you get a new team. You know, like your 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 people on the team change. You get new you new uniforms, uh, yeah. you know? Like, this is this uh, is the same fucking game. There's nothing different outside of the multiplayer. Yeah, and for what it's worth, uh, Madden does change. Now, it isn't super, like, um, obvious, the changes that come to Madden, because a lot of the um, 
the the new gameplay tweaks and stuff that they implement is, is kind of secondary features and stuff and kind of um behind the the, the scenes are, are, are new new ways to play but the, the on the field stuff is, is so similar that most people on the surface level do, don't realize it um the, the kind of uh, back end stuff that they're changing and new ways to play from like the coach's perspective or you know s stuff like that um th this is a game that the the first version of it was incomplete now they're giving us something closer to the original promise and just basically making everyone spend another thirty dollars on it um how about five dollars so, yeah. or ten dollars for multiplayer i'd pay that and i'd say okay that's fair a whole new game is just it's not a new game that's my biggest problem with it is you know like and we're seeing this everywhere with all sorts of products and stuff just slap a sticker on it call it something different and um and granted it's got more it's got it's got multiplayer it's what people wanted but like the i i feel like i i, I didn't pay for the game but i feel like they screwed me like everybody else that bought the game feel like they got screwed because they did because now they have they're expecting a whole you're gonna pay another thirty dollars so you can play against your friends. I wouldn't do it, um, you know. Yeah. And I just think that that's crazy to me. Yeah, me either. And mm -hmm. uh, for what for what's worth, I, I'm confident that whatever bugs do exist in this game, um, they're gonna get it worked out. And if you don't own NFL Pro Era One, you'll probably uh, find Pro Era Two worth the the price of admission uh, eventually. Um, but I won't be buying it. I won't be dropping another 30 on it um, myself. I'll give it another year, maybe pick up three, you know, or four, two years from now, and uh, maybe get something that's significantly different than uh, the one, which I already have. It's just a bummer because this is what VR needs. They, they need NFL games that you can play against your friends, that people can tell everybody about how you get to be in this NFL game. And and what is the biggest deterrent when you buy a game on Steam? Reviews. And and it's it's got all these bad reviews now um because they they decided to to go to this route and it's it just sucks. Yep. Mm -hmm. Agreed. But we needed the third title and this was our third <laughs> title. So Very congratulations, true. NFL Pro Era for you did the it. nomination. You did it. <laughs> uh, but to round out the three, uh, we do actually have another good title that deserves to be here. And that title is Ghost Signal, a Stellaris game. Um, this game was originally a Quest um, exclusive. Now it has come to Steam as well as PlayStation VR 2, as we're going to speak, speak on in a few minutes. Um, but this is an upgraded version of the game um, visually. Uh, it's still the same game. It still plays the same. Uh, but there, there's some uh, additional details, some better lighting and so, stuff uh, on the new version of the game. Uh, Eric, this is a game that, judging from the, the trailer, I, I wasn't exactly all that enthusiastic about when it launched. Uh, but when, after you get in there and kind of play it a little bit and see what it's all about, you start to realize that the, uh, the, the 2D footage of this game doesn't know justice. Yeah, this is uh, this is exactly one of those games that you have to get into the headset and play it to really get a feel for what it's all about and what it looks like. Because if you watch this on a, on like the tray, even in the trailer, which is a you know well done trailer, it just doesn't it doesn't translate of what it really feels like to be in there. And some of these you know epic space battles that you get into, and some of the sizes of some of the the bosses, or some even just some of the aliens that are that are out there, you know, with you are incredible and like the whole the whole idea of having this type of game being a like a roguelike type game but like uh, where you're controlling a spaceship is it's just something different that we haven't seen and i absolutely love it man i think it's one of the best games out there and um i'm gonna have a tough choice this uh this one i didn't think i was going to have a tough choice because i actually forgot about this game <laughs> coming to pc and then when i saw it on the list i'm like oh damn now i have a choice uh roots cure roguelike progression here um th this is a, a very classic gameplay loop that just works there's a reason why we're getting an influx of these games into uh into vr now and it's because it works and they executed on it pretty well here um 
I think it's the biggest draw of the game. You know, they're, they're, uh, it, it's a pretty good looking game. Uh, the minute to minute gameplay is pretty fun, but that's not what really makes it special. What makes it special is the progression system of the game. Yeah, absolutely. And you get sucked into it, spend a lot of time. And it's not my type of game, but there is something about this type of um, having this this whole universe or everything going on at your fingertips, right? And it's kind of um, the scale. I imagine this looks phenomenal inside the headset in a PC VR yeah. headset, right? Because um, it looked amazing on the other ones. Or on the the quest was it? This was quest, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was originally a quest exclusive. Um, a lot of depth here, Eric. Uh, this is a game that you you don't just play through it once. I mean, to to really fully make it through the campaign, uh, what do you got? You got to run through this thing what four, five, six times to uh, to to get all the all the way through it and actually beat it. Yeah, this is like one of those where you have to like get you're going to have multiple things to open and unlock through your playthroughs. And I, I haven't even scratched the surface surface in this game. And, and, you know, I want to, it's a really cool game, but there's so much gameplay here. Um, that's one of those things where it, it almost hurts it because it's so daunting to be able to play this through this whole thing. But I mean, it's, it's a cool game to try and get through it. Like I want to get through it. I want to see there. Like I've only seen so many of these like space creatures that you'll see in this game or some of the ships that you'll see. They get absolutely huge later in the game, um, and I I, I want to see them all. Like I, I want to get through it and see them all. So uh, I just hope I can have time to get back in there and do that. So um, yeah, I, I'll never <laughs> I'll, I'll it's, never finish it's this game. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a little too much for for my schedule. Um, but I'm glad I'm glad uh, that it surprised me. Right, I'm glad that this turned out to be something uh really good because i was expecting it to be mediocre to, to be quite honest and, and it turned out to be better than that hooked warm the uh, hoosier, so we, game, hoosier game cat says ghost signal is my biggest surprise of the year i love it yeah well that that's the kind of th the thing here right because um because honestly i we're sitting here and obviously for PC VR game of the month, it's seventh guest versus this uh, NFL pro air is not going to factor into it at all. Um, I feel like there might've been a little bit more wider appeal for, for the seventh guest. Um, but as far as like the way people were reviewing it and receiving it, I think there was a lot more like high scores for ghost signal. Like as much you know, as as widely loved as the seventh guest was, I don't. You know, I've seen a lot more people say that Ghost Signal might be their favorite game. You know what I mean? Uh, so it's interesting. Now, for me, um, my personal taste, it's the seventh guest for me. Um, that's just more my speed of game. It's it's a it's the more my type of game. I I love the the polish of it. I love the, um, the the puzzles. I, I mean, I love pretty much everything about that game. Um, and while, while I appreciate Solaris and can recognize uh, how much a lot of people really love it, um, if I had both games sitting in front of me right now, 10 times out of 10, I'm going to the seventh guest. Um, so I ask you, Eric, uh, who gets your vote? Man, this is tough. Like I said, I I didn't I forgot all about this game. So or for uh, um, Ghost Signal, so I thought it was going to be an easy choice, and it's way a harder choice than I thought it was. I I really love Seventh Guest, and this is not a game uh, for me. This was an opposite. I didn't think I was going to like Seventh Guest because it's not my type of game. So I didn't think I would be anywhere near as infatuated with that game as I have been. Um, I did like Solaris. Um not solaris but uh, ghost signal <laughs> um earlier on so I, I was way more like into that game so uh, this is so tough for me i think in the end i'll probably end up having to go to 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 um the seventh guest just because of of what it is and um that it was a flat game that a lot of people absolutely loved and i think they did a really good job of bringing that flat game to life in virtual reality um, you know, and they did a justice and I think they made one of the best approachable, um, 
you know, good looking puzzle games uh, on the headset. So I, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to go seventh guest, even though it's a real close for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. See, the only reason I even question it again is because of the way other people kind of received ghost signal. I, I liked it. Um, it. It's a solid, good game. It's like an eight out of 10 game for me. Uh, where seventh guess is probably an eight and a half or a nine out of ten for me. Like I really, I really was impressed with seventh guest. Uh, Roots, uh, what about you? Where's uh, your vote going? I, I'd have to go with seventh guess as well. Even it has nothing to do with the fact that hey, uh, this isn't my type of game. I just, I, I believe that there, there's something. That this is a, a really good game. Um, don't get me wrong. I mean, even just the, looking at it, it kind of makes me want to go on and play it because it, I guarantee this game looks fucking amazing. Um, but I think some seventh guest is doing something um, like Mash said special. Like they're they, they really how many games like that you t see a, a flat game and it's just the easiest thing to bring it into VR, right? It's not, and so many studios blow it and ruin it. And there's so much nostalgia with seventh guest, and there's so many people coming into VR or already in VR that are gonna really resonate with it and it's good it's gonna be amazing and like i said I, th I i think the room vr is amazing it's it's probably up until the seventh guest was was what i would consider the best puzzle game in vr and not just because of the puzzles it's the overall everything the storytelling the just everything about it even just even that being able to use that romper room mirror thing to be able to to see different things in the pictures and and see how things looked cleaner and 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 um, you know the the ghosts are so solid people, and it just there's little details like that that most games don't take the 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 care to to do, and it makes me feel like I'm really in that world. Uh, and I think devs should take a, a hint from that. You know, don't, just getting me putting me in the world's not enough. You need to make it like so fantastic that I I want to be in that world over looking at it comfortably through my TV. And the seventh guest does it. Oh. Uh, yeah. So uh, for what it's worth, it looks like the uh, the chat agrees with us on a um, a three to one clip. Seventy five percent of votes going to the seventh guest. So uh, that makes it pretty unanimous. And the seventh guest is the PCBR game of the month for October twenty twenty three. Winner. <laughs> nice. Winner, winner, right, chicken dinner, right? Indeed. Um, all right, so we move on to PSVR 2. Um, and this is really interesting. Because um, normally uh, we can very clearly come out. And, we, and just for fun, each month we, we come out and we say, all right, this platform won the month. Um, but it isn't so clear this month. Now, if we were going to say that the platform that had the most good games released for it this month uh, is the winner, then PSVR 2 is the winner, hands down. There were more good games that came out on PSVR 2 by far than either of the other platforms this month. Um, the thing is, is maybe not the best games. Like, maybe not as many of the very, very good games as we'll see later. Uh, but it, it was pretty, pretty awesome month for PSVR too. Eric, I don't know if we've had another month like this since uh, since February when we had the you know the forty or fifty games or whatever that launched with PSVR two. Yeah, and it was a super slow summer. So I mean, I think now between now and the end of the year, I think we're going to start to see, you know, some some really you know some number one some really busy months, but you know, better game. I think we're going to start to see a better, higher level of games from PlayStation. This is the, this is the things that we've all been waiting for. Like we've been like, kind of like hanging our hat on. We are going to see some amazing games coming to this, this console at this time of year. And we're getting there now. Like we're starting to see it. And, um, you know, I, I I'm looking forward to, it. I've been critical of PlayStation, you know, especially since launch that, you know, we need to see more. I want to hear more. I need to see more. Like give me, give me something to show faith in this console and, and, and this, uh, and this headset. And I think we're finally getting there now. Like, I think we're going to see it now. November looks really good. You know, the holidays look really good. So uh, 
it's good to see you know some of these these games all coming to the PlayStation and looking good and being you know good playable games. So as we start to look at what came out in October for PSVR two, I want to ask kind of a larger question uh, because we had some significant ports come in from PSVR one this month and when we're starting to see more of this more often where games are coming from psvr1 they're launching on psvr2 um with no new content per se but they'll have upgraded graphics you know they'll have 4k textures they'll have some uh, haptics and adaptive trigger support a definite better version of the uh, uh of these games but at the end of the day, it's the same game. So as we go through these first few um, games on the list, I want to ask, should we be considering these games in the game of the month discussion? Um, well, we're not doing it for Quest 3. Like We're seeing games getting Quest 3 upgrades, and we're just calling that backwards compatibility, right? Even though they're coming to Quest 3 and, and they're getting updated graphics and, and updated haptics, just like the PSVR version, w nobody's like nominating those uh, for Game of the Month because they're, they're all free, right? It's all free upgrade. Because of the way that Meta has structured their platform, developers don't have to really support it. All the games come along, and then developers, it's optional whether or not they want to really upgrade it or not. With PSVR, it's a bit different because the platform from generation to generation is so different that every uh, every game that gets ported to the new system has to be done so specifically by the developer and they have to put significant work. It's not always free. There are often charges that, that uh, come along with getting the upgraded version. So the question is, is do these games, should these games be treated as new releases? In the first such game you can see on, uh, on your screen right there, Pixel Ripped 1995, a classic VR game beloved by many people. Now on PSVR 2 with upgraded graphics and haptics, uh, the best version of Pixel Ripped 1995 on any platform so far, Eric. Um, but the question is, should 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 we be considering this uh for game of the month i i love this game uh i'm gonna say no i don't think they should be considered um because it it opens up too much like i mean if they decide to we could see like a huge influx of all these games into here and and, and if they're just basically moving them from one console to the other, i mean we don't like i said we don't do it with the other platform i don't think we can do it here Unless there's something so drastically different, what do you? I mean, would yeah. there would have to be something like so different between one and the other that would make me want to go through it again? Yeah, if there were new content, I would, I would, it would be a lot easier, right? If, if mm -hmm. there was something added into the game that that you couldn't get anywhere else, then it's kind of like a new game; it's a new version, right? right. Uh, but roots as we move on to the next uh, game, um. Uh, like the, the question becomes more interesting because when you're talking about a game like Red Matter, uh, which just came out on PSVR 2 a couple of weeks ago, um, again, uh, 4K textures, they've added in foveated rendering. Um, they, they've upgraded the, uh, the controls in the game, the, in the movement. Um, they've really used the haptics and triggers to their fullest. That the vertical robot did what vertical robot does, and they've basically given us the best version of Red Matter that we've ever seen. And this is one of the best VR puzzle games of all time, and it's the best version. So, if we we are going to consider these games, I mean, you're, we're going to have a hard time finding a better game that came out this month on any platform. Uh, not very many games that came out this year better than Red Matter is on psvr2 right now so roots i ask you should we be considering these games for game of the month 
I have to agree with Eric in a respect. I mean, I guess if, if, if it's a game that's special enough, that's had enough done, we'll have a, a specific conversation about that particular game and maybe it just decide we decide, okay, that one's, there's enough different. But the biggest thing is, is like, if it's not a completely new release of the game, it shouldn't be a new game release i mean we you know we we have categories for you know best improved game or all these different things but game of the month is really for the most part for for games that you know hey this new game just came out let's check it out um you know with the exceptions of you know because there are some games that completely overhaul or change everything and then at that point it is a new game right so yeah and, and what you're saying is true like there will definitely be categories during the uh, the 2023 show um, for like the best port or, or the most upgraded version, and and we may even do a new category since we do have you know PSVR two and Quest three to kind of uh, uh, look at you know my, my best next gen upgrade uh, award or something to that effect. Um, but you're right when when I look at uh when i when i look at game of the month and, and, I'm, and I'm really looking at games i'm looking for games that are new to the platform now it would be different if red matter had never come to psvr1 and they're porting it from pc on the psvr2 mm. and then giving it these upgrades and sony players had never seen this game before then that Sure, we could consider it as a platform game of the month contender. It, and as we've said before, those games aren't eligible for game of the year for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like because the the overall game of the year, all platforms, is meant for games that are new to VR a, in general. So while uh, a game like, um, what was the game that came out last year on... Uh, on uh, other platforms, but came to P PSVR for the first time this year. Um, hmm. Red Matter 2. Red Matter 2 is a perfect example of this. So Red Matter 2 is a front runner for PSVR 2 Game of the Year. It will not win overall VR Game of the Year. It's because it's not eligible because it's technically a 2022 game. And I kind of feel like we have something similar going on here with, with these games where sure they're coming to psvr2 but we already saw them on psvr1 and it's the same game it's the same content just uh, a slightly better version or in some cases a you know a, a much better version uh looper their underground game cat is saying alvo was in consideration for uh game of the month and won and creed even won game of the month and the room was in consideration and it's a good point that's yeah. a good point. Um, well, this is the we, thing. Okay, so whether or not we've we've talked, we've brought those other games and they've won it, this is why we're having that conversation, Looper, is like, because as we're doing it, Wes is ob it's obviously crossing Wes's mind. He's starting to, starting to think, hey, should we even be having these in here? Yeah, you know, maybe yeah. those shouldn't have even made it to begin with. And there, and somebody in the in the chat has got the even more valid point or i guess the more more uh pertinent point is none of those are going to make it past it you know the, it's a it's an honorable mention they're not creed isn't winning game of the the year um oh, again just like what we just said with red matter 2 it won't even be considered for game of the year which is the point of game of the month right we're nominating the whole reason we do game of the month is to nominate games for game of the year and um yeah you're right maybe we should have had this uh, conversation sooner but we haven't really had like this many uh, great you know ports come from psvr1 since maybe maybe we did in february uh, i'm not even sure if that's true or not um but we've we've had five notable ones mm -hmm. this month we typically don't even have five nominees you know or, or many more than five nominees for the category so that's why the the question's just now coming up and i'm just posing it as a question um because exactly what we just said are are we doing the platform a disservice if we continue to allow these games to be uh nominated and and 
and putting forth games each month that aren't even going to be eligible for the game of the year conversation at the end of the year. That, that that's what I'm asking. Um, so I'm, I'm going to do a poll here. I'm going to, as we move on to the next game, which was angry birds, uh, VR, the Isle of pigs. Um, I'm not sure like the, this game. I, I did play it on PSVR two. Um, and it's a great port. Uh, obviously, the adaptive triggers add a little bit. Very much the same game. Uh, but it was very different than it was the last time I played it. Um, because now, there's user-created content mm. with this game. Uh, the, there are user-created levels. Now, I'm not sure whether or not that's it, that was the case on PSVR 1. Because after I kind of played through it initially, I never went back to it. Um but it's absolutely the case now, and uh, this was a great game to begin with, and it's even better now, Roots, because there's just like infinite levels to play now that uh, people have been making levels for it for you know well over a year. Wow, it's crazy. Yeah, it's definitely uh, definitely adds to. It. I don't know if it'd be enough to add to it to make it, um, you know, able to be considered for this list. There was one that somebody mentioned in the chat. Um, that I, I disagree with because kind of along the lines of, I think it was J Devil um, or maybe, but along the lines of what we were saying there, and they said uh, Zombie Land Remastered. But I believe that did believe, belong yeah. in the conversation because they literally changed everything and added content to it. It, it, it became a different game on the PlayStation VR 2 um, than it was before. So. Yeah, I mean, this just gets it just gets to a slippery slope. I'm not opposed to it. Like, I'm I'm like, okay, let's do it. But what if, I mean, I don't, and I don't even think this will happen. But what if they decided to open the floodgates and the entire PlayStation VR one library just dumps over into the PlayStation VR two? Do we have to bring every game back in, and and look to bring every game back into the discussion of game of the month whenever whenever you know time it comes in? I mean, we, we again we don't do that for you know some of the other platforms. So it's just. It's a slippery slope. Like to me, like Roots is exactly right with with Zombieland. To me, that's so much of a difference, and and you know other games too. Any other game where it's like affected, you know, it's a highly affected game where again they have a whole different you know B side uh, of levels to Zombieland. It's completely different than um, than the Quest or the PC version. So that one I think deserved it. But I, I'm open to like you know discussion. You know how we want to do it. I just. I just don't want to see it so watered down that if, if something happens and we do get a like a a lot of these titles that start to happen and do this that I don't want to water down you know what are games that deserve it this year because we have so many you know game other games coming in. Yeah, um, it's a difficult question, and again we're 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 just trying to figure this stuff out. We've never really had this situation that we've had to deal with before. Um, that's what people have to realize. We're figuring this out in real time and we're, uh, we're, yeah. and we're bringing you into the conversation. Um, because you know, it, it's just, just, things are changing. The dynamic is changing. So many games are coming over and, um, yeah, I agree a hundred percent with uh, J devil. I, I think, uh, it should be for new games, you know? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, uh... Because I mean, what 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 are we gonna do? What are we gonna do next month when Astrobot and Farpoint and mm -hmm. all of these all time great games come over, mm -hmm. um, with 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 slightly uh, better graphics but no new content? And um, I mean, if, if we're gonna consider those equal with the new releases, in most cases those games are gonna win. So is Astrobot? going to be the psvr2 game of the year in 2024 i mean that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense does it i mean does it am i wrong no it doesn't make sense or it wouldn't it wouldn't at all and you know at the end of the day um people are forgetting too what we've said from the very beginning of any of these um all of these are guidelines but at the end of the day uh we, we make the call anyway so if we decide to put a game in there we're going to put it in there um you know we just want we do want to be more as uniform as we can um and this is just something that as i can guarantee as wes was making this list it started he started having this debate in his mind and i think this is, needs to be debated so that we can move forward 
in the proper fashion. I know this. this I is want what about come. <laughs> I want this discussion. I want to have this. If they all come, I'll be super happy, and I'll I'll love the discussion. Looper says, what about Wanderers? I thought about Wanderer when I came up with this question. Wanderer is a different story. Wanderer is a remake. They're, they're literally remaking, remaking Wanderer. It. It's, they're even giving it a new title. That, that is more than just saying, well, it's got a 4K textures now and some haptics. Foveated they're remaking the game. Adaptive yeah. triggers. Like all of those things add to the game, but it's not changing them, changing it. And that's the difference. For sure. Yeah, I mean, w Wanderer, the Fragments of Fate, or whatever they're calling it, it it's it's even a new title. It, like, um, yeah, I, I, I would consider that to be exactly um, exactly the opposite of what we're talking about now. That That's a very clear answer. I, and hopefully more of these uh, PSVR 1 uh, upgrades turn out to be like that, you know, with, with uh, full-on remakes. Um, but that's not what we're talking about here. A Angry Birds is the same Angry Birds, right? Red Matter, it's the best version of Red Matter, but it's still it's still Red Matter. And and you're right. We, we should have probably had this conversation before uh, Alvo and Creed. And maybe we didn't because, one, there weren't as many uh, of these upgrades those months. And maybe there weren't as many great games that came out those months. Like... Um, this is the first with red matter this month this is the first maybe the first time that we've had the the it come up where like an all-time great game is in the conversation here right it's gonna uh, which makes a difference it's gonna kill us when we go we have to not put far <laughs> far point or or astro bond i guarantee we're 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 gonna want to put it on that list but we're not going to and so like it's just the way it is but i i you know i want to see those games for sure so uh as we move on we come to a game like racket fury and th now this is an interesting one right because with racket fury um again we very much have the same game that was out on playstation vr1 but here's the interesting thing about racket fury um not only is this not a free upgrade this isn't like a five to ten dollar upgrade fee to get this game no one there is no upgrade path for this if you want to play racket fury on psvr2 you have to pay thirty dollars you have to buy a new copy of the game and here's the weird thing about this one roots this game was twenty dollars on psvr1 and to get the same game on psvr2 you have to pay thirty dollars upgraded graphics um yes. yeah right upgraded it, graphics and it, maybe some haptics it's a hundred percent backwards from what we're saying all always you know we don't mind paying an upgrade fee, you know, like you've updated it, charge us five, ten bucks. No, just go ahead and recharge us for the entire new game because you got our fucking balls over. A, you know what I mean? You basically <laughs> we can't play your game. We can't play this unless we buy it again. Um, that just sucks. Yeah. Ryan B says port of the month. Um, you know, it, we're not Maybe. at that point yet, but we might get might to that happen. point. Yeah. Yeah. We might get to that point if we start seeing four and five and six of these PSVR one ports every month, um, then maybe. And and if if we if we say okay, these games are legitimate nominees, and we start letting them actually be game of the month nominees, then wouldn't we have to go to the quest and say that all of these quest games that that get visual upgrades? are now nominees those are new games too yeah <laughs> that's a slippery slope man yeah because how really you have is. so many quest threes there's they, they're doing them all the time right so the upgrades uh so looper says i don't see how psvr1 port is different from a quest or pc port if alex gets ported it will be considered so why astro shouldn't um because Half-Life Alex has never been on PlayStation before. It's completely different. Yeah, we're not, but, we're, you know, you're, I, I don't know. We're not going back and looking at Quest 1 releases and versus Quest 3 releases, you know? Like, if it's released in Quest 1, that's it, man. 
Like, you know what I mean? If, like, if, if Astro Bot came to PC, we would yeah. consider that for, uh, it would be a legitimate nominee for PC VR Game of the Month. Yeah. But Orcrut, like we yeah. said, it wouldn't be a Game of the Overall Game of the Year nominee. It would just be for the platform. The same way Red Matter 2 was a legitimate Game of the Month, but and it will be a Game of the Year nominee for PSVR 2, but it won't be for the overall. Um, so yeah, your, your analogy just doesn't work. It's more, if Alex were to come to, to PSVR, it would be the same thing as Red Matter coming to PSVR. It would be considered for everything except for overall, all platforms game of the year. If PSVR 2 is a completely new platform, then why does everybody get all bent out of shape when they have to pay for, uh, pay for upgrades? Like right. why do, why do people expect free upgrades? That's good. You know, point. if it's a new platform, if it's a new platform, then we should just be paying full price for all the upgrades. That, Racket Fury, ha they got it right. Oh my God, everybody else sucks. Racket Fury did it right. I mean, everybody should go out and buy their thirty dollar upgrade of the new version of this game. Game of the month. I don't know, man. I don't know. It. it, it Again, it opens up a very slippery slope as uh, there's, what, six or 700 PSVR 1 games that could potentially come to PSVR 2 and with nothing more than visual upgrades and, in some cases, only visual upgrades. Um, like, we, we didn't consider, um, for example, uh, The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Chapter 1 when it came over. Like, we, we didn't even talk about it, like... It was just, um, it was just a port, right? It was just a port from last gen to this gen, um, much like the same thing on Quest Two. Like seeing that game from come from Quest One to Quest Two was uh, was a notable upgrade, and, and it will be uh, even more notable upgrade upgrade coming from Quest Two to Quest Three. But it won't get a new nomination for it. Um, so, so basically, from Looper's point perspective, because PSVR two is not didn't automatically it, did not automatically uh, be backwards compatible with the PSVR one lab library, then it has to be considered a whole new platform. But Quest doesn't count, and PCVR doesn't count because those are backwards compatible basically is his point of view i just i don't know i don't i don't know how to again my 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 instinct is to say that the, the, these are these games don't these games shouldn't be considered because again they've been playable on playstation for years and there's no new content it's just um it's just a a feature bump from the new hardware you know Looper says uh that make okay that makes sense. So yeah, it's it's definitely it's there's a reason why we're having this discussion. Um uh, because yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, it's it's like we we go back and forth in so many ways and and uh this is kind of like a bre living breathing document almost like the constitution of the United States, right? <laughs> Maybe not on that yeah. level, but um it's changing and mutating and I love it. And who knows, maybe maybe we'll go back and as we're talking about um game of the year nominees if there was a a great game that came out the same month as alvo or creed maybe we'll nominate those games now you know what i'm saying in hindsight now that we're kind of leaning toward disallowing right these psvr1 um ports straight ports um maybe in retrospect obviously we're not going to go back and say those games weren't the game of the month because we already named them game of the month we're not going to take that away but if there was another game that really turned out to be great those months maybe we give them a, a nomination when we talk about game of the year for psvr uh, philo zick says what if stormland comes to psvr too well then it's a completely yeah. new platform <laughs> and it's going to be game yeah. of, it could be game of the year I, I, right. how would, amazing it would, would that be, like, be 
It would be like it would be like Red Matter Two, assuming that it was the same Stormland that came to Oculus. I would be surprised. Like I wouldn't be surprised if Stormland came to PSVR Two. I would be surprised if it wasn't a, a remake. Like I would expect Stormland to be an all new version of Stormland if it comes to PlayStation VR, a better version. Right. But we'll see. It would be, uh, in that case, it would be like Red Matter 2. It would get a nomination for Game of the Month. It would get, no if it won, it would be nominated for PSVR Game of the Year. Um, but it wouldn't be nominated for the overall Game it, of the Year. It's already it, had that it, shot. It, yeah. Yeah, it already had that in 2018 or whenever it came out. Um, so then we move on to the next title. And this is a title that I feel like absolutely should be nominated for Game of the Month, uh, even though it is a PSVR 1 port. And that game is Waltz of the Wizard. Waltz of the Wizard was on PlayStation VR 1. Uh, but Waltz of the Wizard on PSVR 2 has a ton of new content that was not playable on PSVR 1. This is a completely different game than the PSVR 1 Waltz of the Wizard. And I gotta say, Roots, I was very impressed with this game, I wasn't quite sure that it would hold up, um, but it's so polished, and there's so much to do in it. I actually had a good time in Once of the Wizard. Hey, you said this is the first time you played it, right? You never played it originally? That's right. Yes, That's right. I think I played I it on the, Yeah, I think I played it on the PC. Oh, fuck, man, a long time ago. I didn't try this version of it. Um, definitely uh, has came a long, long way from the very beginning. And it's been out for a long... I mean, I think it's been around since the very beginning of VR, 2016 maybe. So it's good to hear that they've constantly been adding and changing and tweaking and continually making it, um, you know, a better version of, of a, a good game or great game, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Eric, um, have you played Waltz of the Wizard since they added all the new content into it and allowed you to kind of leave the room and and do like the story content and stuff yeah I've, I've been in it and checked it out i mean i didn't like spend a ton of time back into it again like i mean it sounds like you played through it way more than i did um but you hadn't played through it before so i did i i mean they've they've updated it quite a bit there this is a, a weird title that they have still put a lot of time into and, and a lot of money into to, to keep making it better and better and they have i mean they if, if you started this, with this title back when it first launched you're just getting more and more and more like I, I, this is a title i'm surprised that they continue to update but they do and uh I'm, I'm glad it's it's here now it's very polished it's very polished it holds up to today's standards in that regard in that it's so very polished now it is a bit of a tech demo this is not a full-fledged game and i think that ultimately will be why it isn't going to be the game of the month this month um, but if this were a full-fledged game with this level of polish on it, it probably would be Game of the Month because, I mean, it's uncommonly a uh, high level of polish here and uh, a game that translates very well to the new uh, platform with the OLED panels and the, uh, and the haptics and everything. Like, uh, it's, um, it's worth your time. It's worth a couple of good sessions, right, and the uh, relatively low price tag. If you're into like these uh, magic and spellcasting games, did you change the world with your voice, Wes? I just saw in the in the trailer that it says you can change the world with your voice. I didn't know you could do that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, man. It's it's uh, again, it's it's pretty uh, pretty impressive tech demo. It, it incorporates all of the uh, features of uh, of a modern VR headset, which is impressive for a. Um, you know, what is essentially a 2016 game, uh, Waltz of the Wizard. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, but as we move on, let's talk about some new games. You know, that, that's enough. That's enough <laughs> talking about 2016 games. Let's talk about some new games. Let's talk about Gazzlers. Uh, this is a game that was nominated for Quest Game of the Month last month. It was nominated for PC VR Game of the Month last month. I think it might have even won or gotten runner-up in one or two of those categories. Um it's a wave shooter. Sure, it's a wave shooter. Uh, but it's an exceptionally addictive and fun wave shooter with a good progression. 
And uh, as is often the case, Roots, um, the best version by maybe a nut hair, but still the best version is on PlayStation VR 2. Yeah, yeah, I would agree 100%. And and this is the thing. Yeah, it's a, it's a wave shooter, but and it may be simple to some extent, but the progression and the depth is not simple. And I would submit this is this game's better than 75% of the games that came out last month. Like it, it just really is that good. And if you're not into wave shooters or you're not into I guess shooters at all, you're not going to like it. It's not magic. But if you like anything like this, um, you're going to love it. Uh, I, this is one of the games that I know Mash agrees with. I, I've spent more time in this game than just about anything else, um, so much so that it, it's it's baffled me. Or did at first, I'm like, what the hell is going on? Because I thought, this is a wave shooter. Um, it's just that good. It's, it's just very good, well done wave shooter. And I, I enjoy it. Uh, Hooked Worm said, the Hoosier Game Cat says, I haven't been sold on Waltz of the Wizard. It seems like Wizard Simulator intro to a VR game. No, I mean, that's fair. Uh, yeah, it's it, like I said a moment ago, it's very much a tech demo. Um, what, what makes it impressive is the, the amount of polishes on it, how, how well done it is, is what makes it, um, what, what makes it impressive. Um, it's not a ton of content, but you will, you'll get a couple of hours out of it. I mean, it's, it's worth, again, it's worth the uh, modest price tag and it's worth your time. Uh, Looper the Underground Game Cat says, Now Gasslers is uh, last month's game. It's not new. Now, come on. You're being mm-hmm. facetious here. This is new to PlayStation VR, period, <laughs> this month. And uh, Eric, um, as, as good as this game is on all platforms, and it is great on all platforms, uh, it's, this colorful uh, world is eye-searing in the uh, bright uh, PSVR 2 OLED panels. And... Um, the uh, the adaptive triggers are perfectly implemented here to, to give the um, the the weapons just a little bit of texture, a little bit of feel, but it's not so prominent that it makes your fingers tired. Um, they they did a good job. They they took a little bit more time getting it out on PSVR two, and and you can see why that they got it right on the first try, which is uh, very important. Yeah, I love this game. I've loved it on every platform I've played it on so far. But this platform, I'm, I'm PlayStation VR 2. This game, like, as soon as you boot it up and you see the opening screen, it, like, screams at you that, hey, this is the best way you're going to play this game. Like, to me, it's, like, it is that much better. Like, it, the, it, 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 it's, like, eye-searingly better as soon as you open the game up. It literally is. The colors are just, like, they pop so much more than anywhere else on any of the other headsets. And I played it on the Pro. I've played it on the Quest 3. Um, I played it on the Valve Index. You know what I mean? And it's way better on every, on this headset than on any other headset. And I do like the triggers better. And I do like, you know, the, the visuals better. And this is the only way that I've been playing it now. Like I'm trying to, you know, because it's a leaderboard chaser. So I don't want to jump back from platform to platform to try and like get different scores. So I've just been playing it on the PlayStation VR 2, you know, since it came out. And that's the way I want to play it because it's that much better to me on on this platform than it is on the others, and I loved it on every other platform too. Um, Old Darth says, "What brightness do you guys run your PSVR two on?" I'm at fifty percent. I, I run mine at uh, like eighty. Like I, I take it down, I think two notches from the top, and um, it's still like super bright. And for what it's worth, like, as much as I'm loving my Quest 3, that's the one thing, the one drawback that I just still haven't gotten past is just how dim the, the displays are. Like, it's like it's like CV1 all over again for mm-hmm. me whenever I go back. And I do I do really like my Quest 2, 3. I, I play it a lot more than I play my Quest 2. And um, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying playing standalone games on it for the first time in a long time. Uh, but every time I put it on, I'm just like, man, I wish I could turn the brightness up on this thing. Um, you can, wh- what you do you have, guys, you just have to have a quest pro because <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's the difference is that I don't feel like it is muted in that respect. Uh, obviously though, um, not going to be as good at graphics, but no, I, I agree hundred percent. I, I feel like, um, the, the quest three, at least the, the small amount of time I did it, it did seem like the, the colors were a little muted or there was a little um that way 
I run, do you I keep run my your, PSVR uh, 2 at 100%. Like, I don't turn it down. Really? It's, yeah, I have it yeah. all the way up. Yeah, I don't like it to, it's all the way up. It hurts me sometimes it's so bright. Like, it's so, it's so bright. Good. It's so good. I love it. Like, Gazzler specifically was one of those games that it just, like, it's it's fucking, like, staring into the sun mm-hmm. playing that game in, on PSVR 2. It's so good, man. I love that. I'm one of the people that, that it doesn't bother me in any way at all having that uh, the brightness up all the way as max as it can go. Well, good for you, bro. I've got to turn mine down just a little bit most of the time. Now, there are exceptions, of course, where, uh, where I turn it up, but most of the time I keep it down on 80. Uh, Jay Devil says Root's doing more justifying. I'm not doing more justifying. I, I, I've i never said that the Quest 3 isn't amazing and it's not better than my Quest Pro in probably 75% of the ways, but there's still 25% that I prefer it. I, you know, um, I don't know, man. I, my, I, I, this is my thought. I would rather have the powerful PC I have over there than the Quest 3. And, this is the thing. I the, with the Quest Pro, I don't need it. If I didn't have this thing, fuck, I would have a Quest Three. I guarantee it. Like I, those pancake lenses are the best things I've ever looked through. I have to have that headset. I have to have the lenses. Um, I just don't believe it's that much better than than my Quest Pro. You know, yes, it's better, but I don't think it's it's like going from you know high to ultra in your graphic settings. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. So J Devil, J Devil says, "Can we get this man a quest?" Look, dude, it's mm-hmm. not money. Like we we offered to give him help with the money if that's what it was. It's not that he bought a brand new graphics card and he just bought another processor and motherboard. Like the guy's got the money for it. He just doesn't feel like he needs it. He's got one in his house that he chooses not to use. Like he just doesn't want one, dude. He doesn't need it. And and, and, uh, and Wes has yeah. nailed it. I might, in six months, I might feel like I need it. Like, I've switched my heart, my hardware so many times, bought and resold headsets. Like, if you're looking for stability from me, don't, <laughs> don't, because that's not, that's not my bag. I like to, I'm very impulsive. But, um, like, right now, I don't feel like I need it. But I, I feel like there could be a case point in the future where I feel 100% different, you know? Um, so... Uh, hooked worm the Hoosier Game Cat. Try Cosmo Dread at the lowest brightness level Ooh. on PlayStation. Oh, True God. blackness. Yeah, I bet. Uh, so let's see. Where, where are we at now? Uh, Gazzler's excellent game uh, on an excellent platform. The best way to play it on PSVR 2. Um, Ghost Signal. Uh, we already talked about Ghost Signal. I don't want to retread it, but I will point out, um, again, just beautiful on the OLEDs, like, uh, j- just, uh, exceptional looking game, uh, on PlayStation VR 2. Um, and then we move on to a game that, uh, again, uh, to sound like a broken record, uh, notably the best version of the game on PlayStation VR 2. Uh, we just said that Gazler's Roots, um, took an extra month to come out on PSVR 2 so that they could put out a version worthy of the new hardware. Uh, Propagation took like an extra five or six months to come out. And you absolutely can see that. Like, this game is gorgeous on PSVR 2. And, um, you know, where it got, you know, kind of middling scores on PCVR, uh, it scored really high with, with not only reviewers but uh gamers as well on uh on playstation vr2 um and while it might not win game of the month uh i think it's absolutely a deserving nominee yeah i agree 100 percent. I, I definitely think this is the the better version of it um i was blown away with the way it looked and performed um and uh yeah this is definitely it may may not be the the propagation uh demo that eric fell in love with um but it's 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 completely different in a different way and uh, i think it's really good yeah it's a pure horror game uh now again like most horror games it borrows a lot from the previous generations um 
But it does do things that, that those games don't do. It, it is very much its own game in certain aspects of it. Um, and considering, uh, I mean, if you take if you take Resident Evil Village, which is a AAA game out of the fray, Eric, I think this game on this platform might be the best horror game that came out this year. Like, best pure horror game. And I'm not talking about zombie shooters or action games. I'm talking about, like, survival horror games. Um, obviously, it's not in the league with Resident Evil Village, but this is an indie game. It shouldn't be. Um, I know it's, you're not the biggest fan of this game, but uh, I think you're in the minority with this one. Most people really enjoyed it. Boy, that's scary if this is the <laughs> second best horror game on the PlayStation. Name, name a better one. Name I don't know if I, I'd have to. I'd have to. Look, you have to give me the names of them. I'd have to. I have to think about even what they are. But man, uh, if this is the second, if this is the, if this is the second best they can do. I mean, oof. I, I will say this. I, I don't like this game. I think this is a lazy game. Um, I think they stole from everything else, and the, it's just it's uninspiring for me. This game. Um, I will say though, if you're gonna play this game, I think this is the play the place to play it. Like to me, I think this is the best version of it. Uh, it's better than the play, uh, the PC version, which I didn't think that looked that great on PC. I know everybody else was like oohing and on over the game, and was like, "Wow, it's amazing on PC." I didn't see it. I wasn't that blown away by it. Um, it definitely doesn't look that good on Quest. Um, so I think, you know, if you're gonna play it, this is the place to play it, and for a decent price, I think it's a good place to play it. Um, it's just not. It's just for me. I just have a lot of problems with this game. But I, I yeah, I, you're right. I'm probably in the minority, but I'm not gonna change my what about owen the minority i could care you don't like owen or not no no the best owen, actor ever it was, as soon as he got his legs ripped off i'm like god damn <laughs> thank god owen's dead yeah. <laughs> he was i mean like, I think this game does i shouldn't uh, this game does a couple of things that are cool the whole idea that the zombies can never die is kind of cool like they will always come back to life but you don't see that in most games you, usually it's a head pop you shoot them in the head they're dead and you don't have to worry about them that's not the case here the, the boss battle at the end is kind of cool. It's just super short for me. Um, you know, again, I just wish uh, I would have probably, I've said it a hundred times. I probably would have been much happier with this game if they didn't call it propagation. But again, I know I'm probably in the minority. Yep. Um, spoilers. <laughs> yeah, we don't think we spoiled too much. Oh, you're talking about the Owen thing. It oh. happens like t 10 minutes into the yeah. game. So. Owen's yeah. Sorry. It you, happens. You move, move on. Owen's gone. Yeah. <laughs> and and trust me by the time that he does die you're going to be happy because he gets kind of a dick so you go first i, I got know. the gun you go first yeah <laughs> dude but uh no i like this game uh I, I like these types of horror games that put you in exploration in uh an infested and haunted place um i like the difficulty level that comes with uh, the fact that uh, you can't just, you know, infinitely fire your gun. You have to pick and choose your spots. You have to stealth to conserve ammo. Uh, there's some good boss fights. There's there's multiple bosses in the game. Um, I just like it. I think it's a very good game. And, uh, yeah, it's a little on the short side. It cer certainly could have been longer. Um, a couple of the voice actors were really bad. And a couple of the puzzles were really bad, but outside of that, I thought it was a pretty good game and um, one of the better releases on PSVR two this this month and this year. I agree. The typewriter, the typewriter save system was super innovative. Yeah, so, I've never seen, that, quite, uh, I've never like seen that, that before. before in my. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. That's Bitmash's oh biggest problem. Is like he's like, dude, this is Resident Evil, dude. Um, well, it's their look, version. Every of it. game. Every game is either Resident Evil or Silent Hill. That's that's it's like true. every game. Yeah. At least they did it. They did a good version of it. Like how many times do we see when it's like you see that they're trying to be like it, and you're like, no, nah. <laughs> this is not even close. So, uh, moving along, uh, the seventh guest again, uh, PCVR game of the month, uh, and one of the front running uh, front runners for. PlayStation VR game of the month. Um, you know, we, we 
sit here over and over again and say, you know, this is the platform to play it on. I feel like it's a little bit closer here. I think even like the standalone version of this game looked excellent. The PC version looked excellent. And the PlayStation version looked excellent. Um, it's a good game no matter what platform you're playing on. And uh, PlayStation VR 2, no exception. It's just a great game all around. Agreed. Definitely. Um... Uh, hooked worm the hoosier game cap propagation paradise hotels 120 hertz frame rate native at times pushes the thrill beyond resident evil 8 in my opinion Ooh, definitely not a better game definitely not a better game he says but it had its moments uh that's what he's saying that's, yeah. uh, there are some that's true. really scary moments in the game so. uh, short but the pacing was good he said there you go <laughs> Uh, all right um so yeah well, i'm not going to rehash uh the seventh guest uh it's a great game but we move on oh, dude, to ghostbusters vr and um so i'll put ghostbusters vr on here and some people might be surprised about that uh because it did largely get negative reviews um and i know this is not going to be the game of the month uh but i feel like this game got a bit of a bum rap i, I think that it's better than most people think that it is and once you get into it with some people and understand how the game plays um there's fun to be had here um roots is that a fair statement to make yeah i mean my biggest problem is you know and hopefully they get them fixed is the bugs you know like i was yeah. having i was having fun until i i had a screeching weird loud sound in my left ear and i thought and then it went away and then you guys went away and then i was like <laughs> it was and it was so disjointed that that particular match and i guarantee you guys are like what the fuck is he doing every time i ran downstairs you guys were were up i swear to god every time it was like you whatever you were doing i was instinctively doing the opposite and then i'm downstairs and i'm like trying to figure out how to get the machine going and i guarantee you guys were up there trying to say roots turn the machine on because I was, you know what I mean? So I, I know what was going on. And so like, if if they can get the bugs fixed, I can have a lot of fun in this game. I, I You know what I mean? It's not the best, like you said, best game of the year, but it's not horrible either. Um, you know, there's a lot of redeeming uh, things about it. So, Yeah, the, the bugs are, are really the, the biggest uh, downfall of the game to me. Like, the, the, and it was more than just audio bugs. There, there are... Uh, quite a few things that are very buggy in the game. Um, nothing too game breaking. I mean, Roots' audio thing was pretty game breaking. Um, but beyond that, I mean, it's just stuff that's annoying. Um, ghosts that your beam shoots through them sometimes, you know, doing upgrades on the table and the upgrade falls through the table and you, you have to pull your gun off and start all over again. Stuff like that. Uh, annoying. Mm. Um, but Eric, people were saying things about this game like it looks bad and it sounds bad, and that's just not true. Now it may be true on Quest, uh, but the version I played on PlayStation VR two looks pretty good and sounds pretty good. Yeah, I mean, this, you, it's definitely two different versions though. So if you're playing this on one, you know, let's just talk about the PlayStation one. I guess we can talk about the Quest one later, but. It's definitely a visual downgrade when you go to the Quest, and it is a definitely a, a, a visual upgrade when you go to the PlayStation VR 2. We actually did that last night. I was playing on Quest last night. You were playing on PlayStation VR 2. We walked over to Ecto-1. I'm, I'm looking at, like, the ghost symbol, the Ghostbuster symbol, of which is the ghost head, and, like, what you know, inside the, the red circle. It's completely blurry for me on Quest 3. Like, completely. There's no definition there at all. It looks like they just kind of blurred over everything. And I'm like, I'm looking at it going, wow, man, this is a static vehicle inside of this otherwise good looking home area. And like, wow, this is like a big symbol of the game. And they didn't put enough, I thought, they didn't put enough detail in it. Wes is like, man, this thing looks beautiful to me in the, in the PlayStation. So I don't know exactly what you mean because I can see detail and perfectly and everything. So I think this is definitely the way you're going to play this game. Um, and the visuals to me, if you're, if you're saying people are saying the visuals are bad in this game, I think that is one of the only things that I would say is not wrong with this game. I think the visuals are actually really good. I think the, the style of it is really good. I wish there was a little bit more detail in some of the things that they do in some of the buildings, but 
I mean, I'm okay with the with the with the style of the graphics the way they are. Like, I feel it has like a real Ghostbusters, you know, the the cartoon real Ghostbusters kind of look to it, and I kind of like that. Um, so I, the way it looks is is great to me. The way it plays and what the game is is a different story for me. Uh, Roots, you played on PlayStation, uh, am I correct? Yes. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't try it on the the Quest. What What do you think about the atmosphere they were able to build with it? I I thought it was good. I felt like it, you know, um, I felt like it, it did feel like Ghostbusters, but I also feel like what MASH said the other day is, is 100% true. Like, there's no connection to Ghostbusters in a lot of ways, you know, outside of the name and the, the theme music, like at least from anything that any of us uh, remember. And I think it would have been little things that, like he was also saying, you know, just seeing a picture of a cartoon Bill Murray on the wall or, you know, whatever, just things that would remind you of the Ghostbusters. You know, they're not in there. You don't need to have his voice. You don't need to, you know what I mean? But you could have little things here or there that kind of remind you that, that shows you that, Hey, this is like, you know, somehow connected. Um, so, uh, but I, I do feel like the, the atmosphere in general is good. Um, and like I said, I enjoy, I've enjoyed, uh, I I think they nailed the the um, the haptics. Like the haptics are amazing in this. It feels oh, really yeah, good um, in the PlayStation VR two to 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 hunt ghosts. So yeah, the uh, the the, uh, the little scanner thing uh, feels great with the trigger and the the haptics. Yeah, they, they did an excellent job, uh, Eric. I mean, th this game is published by sony pictures virtual reality do you think they intentionally sabotage the, the meta version of it <laughs> maybe i don't know maybe I, it would make kind of sense i guess but uh i don't know um you, you're we're, we're talking about like some things that are wrong with this game and if we're saying that this is a sony pictures title made by a company called in dreams do we expect it to be like perfect? Like I, I expect it to not have the issues that we're talking about. Yes. Cause we're like, we're like, Oh, we got have some issues, but you know, they're not game breaking, but you know, yeah, but they're kind of game breaking, you know, and we have this issue with this issue and this issue. It's just not normally something that we talk about and dreams with like when and dreams launches their games, they lo don't launch them like, like this. And this is a big IP for them, right? Like this is, this is big for them. This is big for in dreams to get ghostbusters. I guarantee you that when they got this, IP, they were through the roof. I mean, this is, you know, they're a big VR studio, but I mean, again, it's, they're big for a VR studio. Um, so what do you think happened here? Do you think they willingly chose to, to launch it like this? Or do you think that Sony said, Hey, we're, we're getting this game out ahead of Halloween, no matter what, uh, get your, get it together as much as you can, uh, because we're going. Yeah. I think either way, it doesn't really matter. It's in dreams. I'm not. I'm. I'm looking at in dreams at this because this is their title. Like I get is Sony's decision on a lot of these things, but the problem is with that within dreams. When you get in bed with Sony for this, that is your issue now. You become the sole responsibility because I could give two shits about Sony. I care about in dreams because that's the that's the VR studio. And for me, them launching an imperfect game is just not off the par for them. Like they needed to figure out a way to make sure that they were either ready then. Um, you know, ahead of deadlines or if, you know, try and get it out on it or, or fight for, you know, delaying it, you know, as much as you can or do what you have to do. To me, this is a huge IP for them. They couldn't fall on their face with this one. And I think they fell on their face. This is, it, it, this needed to be a home run. Now, I'm not saying that I am the definitive person to say this is a game for me and you should take from what I say to the bank. But there are enough people out there that were divided. And this is a game that we could not be divided on. All right, so don't take my word for it, but go look at the reviews. Like this is a game that needed to come out and be overwhelmingly great for all of us in virtual reality, and they dropped the ball on it. If there are, it, there's probably it's probably 50-50 right now, or maybe like 60-40. I'll give it if there's enough people out there to love it. But it's that close to where people are saying it's either good or bad. Mm. If it's that much of an, if it's that much of people saying it's bad, that's not good. And whatever, whatever, whatever we think about it, that's bad for this game. It's bad for in dreams. It's bad for the IP of Ghostbusters. It's bad for Sony. So if that's the case, and we can, that's the, all we can say about this game. I mean, again, don't take me. I don't like this game. Don't take me. 
this is a failure for them. This is a failure. If half the people don't like it and are saying they're refunding it, that's a failure. Yeah, well, um, Hookworm, the, the Hoosier Gamecat, said, what would each of you suggest to make this game a go-to for years? What's it missing? Well, um, first thing, the obvious thing, they need to fix the bugs. Like, uh, they need to get rid of the bugs ASAP. That needs to happen yesterday. I want to ride uh, in the. That, I want to ride in the Ecto. Yeah. Let me get in the car. Let me drive around. Let me at least even see me driving. Like, I don't like click on something and then you're now you're in the, the area. I don't feel like I got in the vehicle and drove anywhere. Ah, sorry, Wes. <laughs> no, I, I, I was just going to say that uh, for me, I would want uh, more uh, gameplay modes. Like there, there's like three or four right now. I feel like it could use at least that many more. I want some cohesiveness to the movie. Like I'm seeing ghosts that don't mean anything to me. They don't even look like ghosts. Some of them like, like there's piranhas. Like there's a ghost piranha. Like I don't understand what the, what, what is the ghost piranha? Like, I mean, I Scary. guess you can, give me the, you can, you can go look at the thing and it'll tell you the backstory, but, but it doesn't make any sense in the Ghostbusters universe. Like, you have ghosts that look like Slimer. Why is there no Slimer in this game? Like, why is there no mention anywhere of the original Ghostbusters? I'm not saying you have to have their voices in there. I have a picture on the wall in there of the original four, even if it's the real Ghostbusters one from the cartoon. I don't even care. But give me something that's like, it doesn't, it, other than the, the, it, the, the, some of the, the tools that you get to use and the, the, the gadgets feel like you're Ghostbusting. To me, it, it, you could call this another title and not Ghostbusters. And I'd be fine because you wouldn't know. Like it, they just don't do enough here, I think, to bring it together. Um, yeah. I don't know. We haven't even gotten to the gameplay, which I think is all lackluster. Or the big hands. Uh, big I, I'm hands. not. I, you know, the gameplay doesn't bother me all that much. Like I, to to the, it's to blast. So repetitive, Wes. Come on, it's so repetitive. What do we do? Well, well, well that's what I. What, but that's what I say when I mean it needs more gameplay modes. Like that that's like the the repetition of it's playing the same kind of um rule set for me but blasting the ghost with the uh the proton packs feels good to me it feels like what i feel like it should feel like you're, you're trapping you know you're blasting ghosts with your wand you're catch, capturing them with the with your traps that's what the ghostbusters do um the scenarios that they put you in i feel like um there should be more of that. That's what they need to do to make the game fresh for me. I think it's the, it's the, it's the same thing over and over again. Like whatever mode you do, you're still doing the same exact thing in whatever mode it is. You're doing it a different way. Mm -hmm. Like what else like would, what, what else would you I, suggest I, that they do? I don't know, but something, it just, everything feels the same and it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like I want to go back and do it again. Like, it's like, you're, it's like going into a shooter and saying all this game makes you do is shoot guns. But why don't I want to go back into it then? Like what? So there's something missing here. Like there's something because that's not most, here that's because, boring. Like, because most shooters give you different gameplay modes and different rule sets. It's kind of, it's part of the problem is it's disjointed in a way. Like this is a, this is an IP that we remember as a story IP. I think that's what, if you had like this really overarching story that pulled you through where you were like you know you you're in the thing and we get a call and we got to go we're you know like you're yeah. actually going somewhere and you're you've got a, a mission to, like and not even a mission like it's it's and a lot of these games do this um whether it be after the fall or whatever um well, i guess after the fall is a little bit different but like having a a, a hub where i'm going on these mini mission things like i, I just i feel it like it's disjointed it just feels disjointed yeah. for this type of a game because it's a story-based movie game right so that, that's a good point man there is a story campaign going on here but it progresses so slowly after mm. the beginning like you, you it doesn't feel like it it feels like you're just like you mentioned doing an after the fall where you're just doing runs to do runs um so yeah i feel like there should be a lot more like story elements here and it should be a much more frequent uh than it is you know at least like every two missions you should be getting part of the story progression it should be taking you to a new map that you weren't able to go to before uh rather than just having the whole map unlocked for you from the very beginning and then occasionally just randomly throwing you a, a, a like a cutscene. um 
they could have done a lot better with that. I, I absolutely agree. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the, the, the point is, is, uh, is it great? No. Uh, should it have been better? Yes. Is it terrible? No. No, I think that it's an average game. I think it's an average game. You know, it's seven out of ten. If you get the DLC. Yeah, that's stupid. Uh, yeah, even at thirty-five bucks is a little overpriced for it. I feel like, but uh, yeah. Hopefully, the fifty-five dollar version ends up being uh, ends up being better. But I'll never know <laughs> unless no, they send exactly. it to me. I'll never know. Yeah, I mean, this this stream is fourteen ninety nine to me. A multi a multiplayer a multiplayer basically a mo basically a multiplayer only game. Like, there's games out there that are multiplayer that are free to play. And this is basically a multiplayer only game because it's not fun to play with by yourself. Um, yeah, I so, can see that. So to me, it's yeah, it's fourteen. It's worth fourteen ninety nine, and then I'll buy the cosmetics or it's, give me it to it free and I'll buy the cosmetics. If you think your cosmetics are that great and you're gonna give me like Ghostbusters and you're gonna give me the outfits and you know ghosts I can buy, let me do that. Give it to me for free and let me go buy what I want to buy. Do yeah. that if you think your game is good enough. They can't give it to you for free, Eric, when they're trying to get their pre-orders so badly that they don't get, I mean, you know like i don't know man there's what? this i feel like i think this in it, the overall story for this is it is it's a, it, it's a miss in a lot of ways it could have been so amazing and um and it just is okay you know if they if they had a full-blown campaign with the the multiplayer i would way more be into that if i could actually have a story where i go out and i go on missions and it's like it feels like it's together and it's like a whole thing i i'm and i and you can even do that co-op i'm down like i think then it, it's worth having a payment on it or, you know a, a, have it be a paid title but otherwise if it's if it's mainly multiplayer i mean i don't know it's just not enough here for me Moving along, uh, Journey to Foundation dropped this month from Archiact. Uh, again, PlayStation VR 2 and Quest only. No PC VR for this one. Um, so uh, the PSVR 2 version is the high fidelity version, or, or what will, you know, in previous years would have been the PC VR version. Um, this is a game that uh, we talked about last week. Uh, I had a few hours in, and while I liked it, I, I didn't love it. Um, I have gone back into the game since then, and I'm happy to say that it does get better. But man, does it take a while to get there. Like, uh, Roots, when I talk about a, a game and I tell you, hey man, this is a slow burn, give it some time. Normally what I mean by that is don't just play it for an hour. You know, give it 90 minutes before you before you start to kind of uh, judge it. Uh, this is a game that when I say it's a slow burn, give it some time. I mean, don't judge it after three hours. <laughs> <laughs> give it four or five. Uh, because, man, it takes a while for this fucking game to get going. But thankfully, thank God, eventually it does pick up. Yeah, it's heavily, 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 heavily story driven, right? And it's one of those things like if you don't like story driven games, this you you won't like this one at all. There's it, it there's almost more story, um, in a way than than game, and and that's not a bad thing. Um, so you know we say all the time we we if, we, if there's a good enough story, we'll take a walking sim. Well, this is not a walking sim. You know what no, I mean? This not. is this is an actual game that's telling an amazing story. And it's worth playing through. And yeah, it takes a little bit of time to get to the good parts. Um, but it's worth that time, right? So uh, I do. I need to get back to this. I have not been had a chance to get back to this. And I really enjoyed what I, I, I um, played of it at, so far. And um, yeah. Eric, I like story-driven games. But man, I, playing the first three hours in a solid block on it, I, I was done with it when I put it down because... All it was was story, and and I'm 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 up for a good story, but the way the game is structured is it makes you replay dialogue trees when you make the wrong choice, mm. and it gets old, man. It gets old quickly, and I could see a lot of people putting this game down before it gets good, um, but it does get good. Uh, eventually, there are some action scenes that come in, and the story itself 
becomes really kind of uh, suspenseful and fun to kind of uh, play your way through. Uh, I'm glad I went back into it because, um, yeah, uh, it, it certainly the, the the mid part of the game is where it really starts to get going. Yeah, and unfortunately, I think there's probably a lot of people are going to be on the same boat with that, and they just won't give it enough time, and or it, and and they'll kind of like for either not go back to it or maybe refund it, um, which would be bad. But I think this absolutely is a really really good game, and I love the story. I'm in love with this game. I went back in it again too, just to because I wanted to give it a little bit more time, and I was like, I, I had other stuff to play, and I'm like, I'm just gonna give it a little <laughs> bit, and I ended up playing like two and a half, three hours more of it Damn. Uh, again, and I'm like, I just I wanted to stay in, I wanted it, I want to keep going and see this whole story out. This is a deep game. This is like I, I'm probably five five hours in, six hours in, something like that, um, and I'm not through. I, I don't know exactly where I'm. I don't know. How, I haven't looked to see how long the game is, but. It doesn't feel like I'm getting anywhere even close yet. Like there's a lot going on here, um, and you know you're right. The 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 um, dialogue trees. It's it's very much of you need to go down a certain path of dialogue to get you to a certain spot, um, and you can make different choices and decisions, and how you progress with some of those will affect things moving forward. Um, but those are the games I love. The I love these types of games, and it gives you just enough action to keep you wanting to keep going. And so you don't get bored and it breaks up some of those dialogue trees that you have to go through. Um, but I think the story is good enough to, to keep you in there. It, it, like it reminds me of a mass effect type game. Cause mass effect was very much that for me. It was a lot of story with a lot of good action, but it, it was dialogue trees. Same thing. You had to talk to a lot of NPCs and like flesh out stories and backgrounds. And this has a feel to that for me. And, and I, you just don't see this in virtual reality a lot. Like I don't know of another game that's, quite like this one in the in the size and the scope of the story uh, and, the, and, and the dialogue trees and the way you affect them and how you do it uh, with the mind control thing so I love this game and I think it's really good people need to give it a chance I again if you don't want to like go through if you're not a story driven person I don't think this is for you if you want like all action that's not what this is but if you like a good story with good action mixed in give this one a chance you just got to give it time Right. It's, uh, it's, there's, there's almost too much going on with the story. Like, I took a few days in between my gameplay sessions, and by the time I got back to it, like, I had forgotten a lot of the nuance. It took me a while to, like, get reacclimated to everything that's going on. Um, it almost makes me wonder if we should have maybe watched the, uh, the, the Apple television series to really fully appreciate it. It makes me wonder, too, because, you know, I, we, Talked about that with uh, Westworld, right? And I was glad I had gone and watched the series before I played it because um, it gave me, a, you know, it didn't give me spoilers for sure, but it gave me, you know, an idea of what was going on behind the scenes um, 100%. This is one thing I will say too, and, and before, you know, because it kind of sounds like we're saying the slow burn, you know, not that it's boring, but. Like it's actually a very entertaining story. So like, you, if you like stories, you're not going to be bored with the story, um, or what's going on. It just takes a while to get to where it really gets good, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is just all about the action and the action gameplay uh, in the the mid part of the game. It's it's the action and the story. It's about the the shit that fucking finally breaks loose with the story that makes it more entertaining. Uh, you know, where at the front it's very much just setting all that up with dialogue. Yeah. From Colossus says the Apple series is excellent. Yeah, we we might should have watch watched it first before we did this. Um, Makes me want to go watch it now, though. I mean, literally, because the story here is that good. I want to go. I want because that's what's dra that's what's like pushing me forward. Is I want to see the outcome of some of this stuff, and they flesh a lot of background out here. They have a whole encyclopedia system that basically will give you every bit of background and it gets bigger as you get going so you can start reading through it uh in the beginning and then you get three four missions past what you just read and then you can go back in and there's new things in there now that you can rediscover um there's a lot there's a lot here like this is a commitment this is this game's a commitment but it's one that i think i'm gonna see through a lot of love for uh, journey to foundation in the chat um which is good uh, a lot of people 
uh, kind of had my uh, my initial uh, take on it uh, when it released, and it seems like over time it's really growing on people. So uh, good to know. Uh, we're going to round out PSVR 2 with our 12th PSVR title this wow. month. Again, there, there was at least 12 more that I didn't list. Like, there was so many titles that came out on PSVR this month. Uh, with the Foglands, and people are like, what? Mm-hmm. Why are we even talking about the Foglands? Very similar situation for me to get to Ghostbusters um, 2, or Ghostbusters VR. Um, is this game going to be Game of the Month? No. No, it's not. Um, but I, I've seen people talking about this game like it's the worst fucking thing that came out on PlayStation VR all year, let alone all month. And that's just simply not true, not from my experience. Played this game for uh, two or three hours, uh, did, a, did a few runs on it, and uh, definitely not a great game, um, but not a horrible game. Uh, uh, I felt it was pretty average. I don't want to spend my time playing average games, uh, but Eric, I, I mean, I mean, th- this is not a terrible game, is it? No, it's, I, I've, played this game in a couple of different settings now um and it's not a terrible game um people are saying this weird this weird things like people are saying like you know um going through and giving it like scores and saying it doesn't belong in the store in any way whatsoever like yeah <laughs> dude there's like, so many games that are way worse than this dude like this is an ugly game and like it's like the one of the worst looking games i've ever seen and like there's just seeing things that are being said, like in reviews, that it doesn't make sense to me. And like, and no, this is not the perfect game because I've been in like I I went in and played it like for an hour and a half, two hours, my first time, and then I went back in for like another two or three hours, and it is not perfect. There's a lot of things it needs help with, but I think it's not. It's by far not the worst game I've ever seen on you know on these platforms, and I do think it's a decent looking game. It needs a little bit of help. Um, it's it's one of those things where we talk about it all the time. W- uh, roguelites can be really really good games when you get them right, and sometimes you don't get them right, and you can kind of get them wrong. And I think they just need some tweaking on their their perk system, which I don't think is great. Their in in run perk system is not good. Their enemy types are a little bit bland, and some of the combat's not great. I think. I think it can, but I, but these are things that can be fixed. Like, I don't think that, and and none of it was like, oh, I don't ever want to go back in. Like I played it. I'm like, okay, I wish this was this, or I wish this was that, but I was like, okay, I'll go do another run. I mean, and I don't know. It it wasn't awful. It wasn't terrible. (laughs) It wasn't great. Well, 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 they can, things can be fixed, but like, I'm looking at the comments in the chat and I'm listening to both of you guys talk about it. Like, uh, at what point does it even matter at this point? Like everybody's decided this thing's a dog shit, so they could fix it all they want now. They've missed their chance. Like you were so excited for this game, Eric, and and mm. like I think that's the biggest thing with this is there was so much excitement. Everybody was talking about how this was Light Brigade, and the only thing that's like Light Brigade is the cards. Like it's nothing like it. So like I I, I just feel like that that you know like it, yeah. I would describe this if somebody was asking me, telling me about a restaurant and they said, and I said, they're like, you got to go there. And they're like, yeah, the, the food's okay. It's not bad. I'm not fucking going there. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't, I just don't see why anybody would should play this game at this point. Um, you know, maybe they, they change a bunch of stuff and it, everybody wants to come back, but I, I just think that they've, they've missed their shot. That's my, my instinct. All right. Yeah, I'll agree with that too. And yeah. again, that what that my I'm not sitting here trying to convince anyone to to go buy or play it. Um, the point is is that it's not a terrible game. Like people are saying, it's a terrible game. It's not a terrible game. Um, again, it, it's very average. Uh, I think in terms of like looks and sound, atmosphere, all that sort of stuff, it's actually pretty good um it, it's a bit janky and repetitive um and the really what kills it for me is the 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 combat's kind of bland and it. it's not it's not very fun to 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 fight um it's not super challenging um the there's not very much diversity in the enemies 
Like it's a lot of the same enemies over and over again. And um, it's kind of slow. Um, it's just, it's not fun to play. It could be fixed. It could definitely be fixed. Uh, the, the, if they made the, the action a bit more fast paced and fluid, uh, add some more enemy types in. Uh, it could it could be a fun game. Uh, it's just not there yet. It, this feels like a beta, um, and probably sh needs another six months of, of work put into it before it launches. But it's already out, so cat's out of the bag with this one. Mm -hmm. This is like a this is like a six and a half, you know, six six and a half game, out of ten for me. And uh, as I've said many times, I, I don't. I don't have time to play sixes. I don't want to play sixes anymore. So um, I hope they get it together. If they do, I'll go, I'll go back in and give it a shot. Um, I just thought it was important for us to let people know it's not as bad as people are saying it is. Gamertag's got a good question. Um, he said he just had a thought. How was it reviewed as a flat game? All right. I don't know if anybody played it. I don't know if anybody played it. Because I wonder if it's like, well, I can't imagine it resonating on a flat version either but i mean it is possible right maybe they focus too much on the flat uh looper says what about tennis on court uh i played <laughs> tennis on court and it was it was so buggy it, it had game breaking bugs when i played it uh, maybe they fixed it uh, i didn't go back into it uh it had game breaking bugs it was like literally giving points to the wrong team it was uh, it was uh, the, the lag in the action was to the point where you couldn't anticipate your opponent's movements no. because it was completely disjointed uh, from uh, real time. You can't have any lag in a tennis game like that. You need to be able to mm -hmm. see where, where your opponent's at and what direction they're going to hit the ball, um, and you just couldn't. So uh, Tennis on Court didn't get a nomination because of that. And to be honest, if I if you were to ask me right now, um, you know, what do I want to go back and play, tennis on court or Foglands? I'm going to play Foglands. So. <laughs> yeah, and I, you know what? And this could like, you know, Mash even said with a little bit more time, it's even better than he had thought. You know, um, so I don't know, man. You know, I hopefully maybe they do change things, they do fix it up, it does get better. Uh, you know, because I think a lot of what this, the, the biggest problem with this is there was a lot of high expectations for this game. Understandably, we want good games. And then when it comes out and it's not even close to what you wanted, it, it just, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's just not a good loop. Like, that's the issue for me. Like, I, the, the number one, the maps are absolutely huge. Like, just trying to figure out, like, I've been lost so many times and, trying to backtrack and can't get to figure out where I need to go. And like, um, so the, the, the maps are huge, but it's, it's like, um, it, the, the gunplay, like you get a basic gun to start with, you know, and you, it just seems like it takes you forever to upgrade and get a different gun. And like, it's tough to do that at all. Like, I mean, you can't, you have to be able to give, you have to give people some variety up front. You can't make them wait so long that they're four runs in or, or whatever before they even think about getting, seeing a new weapon. Um, you know what I mean? And you have to give people some gratification in a game where it's live, die and repeat, and you're having to redo things over and over and over again, you have to make things gratifying enough to want to continue. Otherwise it gets to be like daunting and otherwise it gets to be a chore and together you're like, ah, I don't want to do this again. Like I've just, I went so far didn't get you know got killed lost all my stuff now i'm starting all over again i didn't get to see exactly what i wanted to see like i saw a couple of guns you could buy um in round that were like these big huge guns and i just didn't have enough money to get them and then when i did get them they were kind of like let down it wasn't as good as i thought it was going to be so to me it's like it has to have a better hook and then those perks those cards that you get in game those perks were not what they're not they were not well thought out of what they do for you in round and they were not well put on the card. What I mean by that, the, the description of what they do is terrible on the card. Like, I don't even know who wrote these things. Like, who? it doesn't even seem like, it, like maybe the English is not their first language or something because it doesn't seem like there's a translate. It almost seems like there's a translation issue of what the card actually does to what it says on the mm -hmm. card. It's just not well done. It's confusing and, and 
And w- with a roguelite, we've talked about it. You have to have a good loop. You have to have that, I just want to play one more, and I don't know if it exactly has that hook yet. It's, it's, it's not completely where, where I don't, I'm like, I don't ever want to play it again. It's just not drawing me back in like a lot of the other roguelites do. Yeah. So that that rounds out uh, our month for PSVR two, um, and I'm gonna go ahead and stop this um, poll we've had going for pretty much the whole segment. Uh, it looks like 59 percent of the people agree with our our initial instinct that those PSVR one ports should not be uh, considered nominees for uh, PSVR two game of the month. So I think that's the direction we're gonna go for right now. If someone convinces me otherwise, at some point, maybe we uh, we change our mind. But uh, right now, I kind of feel like this is the way to go with it. Uh, so with that said, what are the front runners for Game of the Month? Uh, so PSVR2 Game of the Month. Uh, I would definitely say uh, The Seventh Guest would be one. Um, I would say that Gazzlers would be one, and I would say that uh, Journey to Foundation would be another one. Looper wants to know, what about Rift to Quest ports like Hubris? Well, the, Um, the Quest platform and the Rift platform are completely different platforms, right? They're not. Yeah, that those are different platforms. It's once PCVR. We consider we consider um, now if, if a game comes out on Rift and then comes three out three months later on Steam, we don't give it another nomination. PCVR is PCVR. Same thing with um, Pico. If if a game came out on Quest and then got a Pico release, we're not going to go do another. Well, yeah. Well, we just don't cover Pico. I mean, if, if Pico becomes something more prominent, we'll come up with rules for Pico. But uh, Quest is Quest, PC is PC. Just because uh, Meta owns both of them, they're, they're different technologies. They're different platforms. Like. Like you can't play all all Rift games on Quest, and you can't play all Quest games on Rift, and even the ones that you can play on both, they are very different versions. All of them are different versions. So, um, yeah, th- th- those are two different things. Um, it's not it's not as different as PSVR one and PSVR two. It's it's mu- it's much more different. The difference between Quest and rift is way different than the quest difference between psvr1 and psvr2 the diff the a better uh analogy would be quest one quest two quest two to quest three uh would be different the same as playstation vr1 playstation vr2 and right. we, we different would never... generations of yeah it's different generations of the same platform correct you're right um PC VR and standalone VR are different things. They're owned by the same company, um, but they're different things completely. Uh, uh, so, Seventh Guest, Gazzlers, Journey to Foundation. Uh, do we have any others? Foglands, no. Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters. no. Oh. Uh, Journey would, uh, uh, Nash, would, you guys would say Journey, right? Would, I mean, yeah, J- Journey's yeah, on Journey the list. Yeah, Journey should okay. be on the list for sure, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put propagation on there because I think a lot of people would um, would say that it deserves to be on I there. say that's so the I'll winner. Let's just there. run with it. <laughs> Watch Mash's head explode. I'll fight you right now. <laughs> Mash will be like, I'm fucking off the show, dude. Uh, Out. All right. So this is a th- tough those one. we'll call the front runners. I'll put the poll out there. And... Uh, since Roots is already talking about how tough it is, I'll start with you, Eric. What's your PSVR game of the month? I'm definitely not doing propagation. Um, it's tough. I, I love Gazzlers. To me, I think Gazzlers is one of the most fun games I'll, I've played all year. Um, but I'll probably take that out just because I think, you know, again, it's a, probably a little shallow compared to the other two games. Um, I... I I've played it more than the other two games. I'll tell you that, um, and I continue to go play it. So I, 
I don't know. This is a tough one. I think Seventh Guest is a really good found Journey to Foundation is a great game. This is tough. It's not... I'll probably oh, go ahead. I'll probably end up going Seventh Guest just because I think it's probably the more approachable game. Yeah, it comes down to those two for me as well. Um Seventh Guest and uh Journey to Foundation, only because propagation is short. It's it's a little too short. If it was twice as long, uh, I would probably be my game of the month. Uh, but it's not. Um, here's the thing, Roots. Like, I feel like having played the first half of these two games that I'm enjoying Seventh Guest more than Journey to Foundation. But I feel like if I finish the games, I might not necessarily feel that way. Uh, but I don't know because I haven't. Uh, what are you thinking? I think you're probably right. Journey to Foundation seems to be building and building to a, an amazing climax, right? Um, I don't know. I, I kind of, I think it's interesting that for a, a little bit there, Propagation looked like it was going to win. And I was like, oh, from the, in, the, in the poll. <laughs> People really love that game. Um, yeah. But I, I would have to agree with, with you guys in the sense that Seventh Guest is definitely more approachable. Um, I feel like it's, it's overall the better game and and like okay so you got journey to foundation which has got an amazing story and it you know and it's everything's the acting everything's great and the action nothing wrong with it but seventh guest has so many different facets to it on top you know what i mean like it just has a lot more going on um like whereas journey might have three or four amazing things seventh Guest is like seven different amazing things and they're all guests in the house so yeah that's a good point H hooked worm the uh the hoosier game cat said yeah. what about uh ghost signal that's a good point a lot it's of people really, really like good. ghost signal yeah especially mash <clears throat> it's really good it's really good I, sh I i all these games are great to me except for propagation like i have no idea why people are voting for propagation oh, well, oh so ghostbusters sense to me <laughs> yeah let's, let's you, get ghostbusters you said all these are list. good come on uh ghostbusters so, on the list is it yeah well right. it's not so, on that not, list. not on you're the right. poll list yeah. you're right you're right uh yeah i right. think uh i th man i uh, that's a good one man i, I forgot about uh I, I forgot about um ghost signal it's a really good game yeah and it's, i'm gonna and redo it, to the me, poll it's, it's, it's better there it's better on playstation than it is, even is on the other platform mm -hmm. so i like i think that's where you'd want to play it if you're gonna play it so it's a really really good game man it's wow. it's so tough man it really is I think Seventh Guest is just a more approachable game, and I think in the end, I think it's it's got some it's got a really good production value. The puzzles are really really good. The voice acting is really on point. Um, it's I think it's a really good game. I just think it's probably one of the best puzzle games that you're gonna find right now out there. So I think I'm gonna go and because it I, because it was a flat game, and I think they have done that flat game proud and and they've you know a lot and it's it's hard to, it's, it's easy to screw these things up uh, but they didn't they did a really good job of bringing this flat game to vr i think it deserves it so i'm redoing the poll uh it was a dead heat between seventh guest guest and propagation uh but i redid the poll and i removed gaslers and put ghost signal in its place um so eric says seventh guest uh what did you say roots seventh guest Seventh guest. Um, so for me, I think that this is kind of the perfect situation for us to have kind of a winner and a runner up because um, it's one of those situations where like there's the potential for foundation to True. after we finish it to, to maybe be one of those games that deserves to be nominated at the end. Um, the only problem with that is is that nobody in the, the the chat seems to think so like everybody says either it's either seventh guest or it's propagation it, well it's the, my question true. is did, did anybody in the chat get as far in like as you were saying like it takes several hours to get to the point where you you're both saying it's getting amazing right um yeah so it, it but it'd be, but 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 that is that a positive or is that a negative that it takes fucking four hours for it to start mm -hmm. start as long know. as you're not bored 
it, it's it's a positive because right? I'll tell you why because no movie or story or book that's worth reading or watching is just going to go straight to the plot line and you, you know what I mean it, like you said it takes time to build a good story and then when it gets good it gets fucking good um not every story does that actually most stories don't do that so if it does it that well um then it could be that at the end of the 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 story you're thinking wow this is like the best fucking game i've ever played um because the story is that good you know so i don't know so i think we have a clear winner here i think seventh guess is a clear winner the question is do we do a runner-up and here's the thing i don't think propagation should be a runner-up because i don't think it's a game of the year contender no it's way. just not long enough. It's not long enough. And um, it's not polished enough. It's just not that caliber of a game. Like, I really enjoyed it, but it's not that caliber of a game, even on PlayStation VR 2. Um, so the question is, do we make Foundation a runner-up? Um, I say yes. Again, the, I say I yes, yes because... Yeah. Well, the poll isn't the, the end all of everything. <laughs> it's, just a, poll, it's, it's just a it's the poll's just, a tiebreaker. Yeah, right. it's a tiebreaker. Um, but and, when when we're on the same page, then the poll's just the poll. I just think it makes it makes more sense to me for Journey to to be the the runner up because it it just it's an unknown. We don't know how this thing's going to go, and how it's going to finish, and you both are really digging the story and i from what i played i haven't gone back in a second time so i haven't gone as far but um i've enjoyed it so yeah and i think <laughs> propagation the problem is a lot of people haven't played it like they haven't gone in and done it or they've been like they're or they haven't gotten far enough into it yet um like they're going to and they just haven't had a chance to so to, to me it's 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 definitely got it's up there with it has possibilities if this thing ends up if the finish is as good as the beginning for me, I mean, I think it's got a chance to be a, a decent game of the year. That Again, this is kind of the point of having a runner-up, right? It's for these cases where we think that a game, we might feel differently about a game at, at the end than we do right now. That's the point. Mm -hmm. Right, and That's it also gives us doing. another reason to go back in there and play further, right? Which we want to do, so... So Escape Portal says, why do runner-up if a, a, if it stands no chance? Well, why do Game of the Month if, if it stands mm -hmm. no chance? Like, if we're, why don't we just call Village the Game of the Year right now and uh, and just say the hell with Game of the Month for the rest of the year? Yeah, there's a yeah, lot and, of conversation. And the fact that I wanna, yeah, I want to talk about it. Like, I want to get a list, and I want to think about it, and I want to play through them more, and I want to know. I want to make sure that, you know, that they are. Like, I, I am not willing to say that anything is Game of the Year yet. Like, to me, it I could agree. be Village, but it could be GT7. It could be Horizon Call of the Mountain. It could be, you know, Seventh Guest. I mean, I think they're all Vertigo debatable two. for sure. Oh, uh, yeah. At least, at least for a discussion. I think anybody that's counting Vertigo 2 out because it's not Resident Evil is fucking crazy. And you're going to be blown away when you go into that game for sure. So I guess it's going to be next year, though, right? Yeah, I think we'll see it this year. So. Damn it. So yeah, seventh guest is clearly the winner here. We'll put that in. Uh, that's two platforms now for seventh guest in a very uh, packed month. So, quite a coup for Vertigo Games. And I am, I am going to put Foundation as a, uh, a runner up. You can call it honorable mention. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, but I do want to revisit this at the end of the year after I've had more time in the game because I do feel like it has potential to work its way in to a nomination and if it doesn't then it won't i mean we'll just we'll gloss right on over it uh, but if it does then i like to have the ability to talk about it and revisit it so we'll mark it there with an asterisk and we will move on to the quest and uh really quickly we've got a lot of the same games out on quest and we're not going to rehash them uh, so, but we will run down just so everyone knows what the nominees are. We have exactly half as many uh, nominees for Quest as we had for PlayStation VR 2. Uh, starting with the winner of both previous categories, the 7th Guest VR. And uh, like we mentioned a moment ago, Eric, 
uh, while it might not look quite as good as the PC or PlayStation version of the game, uh, it looks very impressive on Quest 3, doesn't it? Looks great. It's it's a it's a fantastic title for the standalone headset. It's one of those titles I think everybody should get. I mean, I'm not a puzzle fan. I don't really like puzzle fans. I love this game. So even if you don't think you're a puzzle fan, I think you'd like this game. Uh, also had Journey to Foundation, which we just mentioned as uh, a potential nominee for Game of the Year down the road, maybe, if it continues to uh, improve the way it did uh, with my last play session. It certainly could work itself into that uh, category. I have yet to look at it on Quest. Um, did either of you? I, I don't remember. Did either of you play this game on Quest? I did not. I did. I played the majority of it think? on the Quest. I loved it. I thought it looked good. I thought it looked really good. I think, um, you know, it's definitely not as good as the PlayStation version, um, you know, and looks-wise. But, I mean, I think it looks great. I mean, I think it's, you know, it's one of the better-looking Quest games, especially if you have a Quest 3, because it's just uh, everything looks better in that headset. So, imagine they awesome. look very similar uh, on Quest and PSVR 2. And the reason why I say that is... Um, you know, it looks it looks really good on PSVR two, but when you look out the windows, at the sky, the sky is kind of low res, mm -hmm. and that's kind of one of the the easy things for uh, devs to upgrade when they're when they're doing upgraded visuals. The skybox is typically one of those early things they check off the list, and they didn't do that here. So I gotta imagine that a lot of things look the same. I'm sure that there's some improved lighting and that sort of thing. Um, but I imagine Quest 3 and PSVR probably look very similar in this game. Yeah, it's colors and textures is the biggest difference between the two. The The colors, again, are always better uh, on the PlayStation VR 2, so it just looks color. The colors look better, and the darks are darker. And then the textures, um, things don't look as wallpapery. They have a little bit more texture to them, especially when you get outside and see like some of the rock structures and when you're in some of these caves. It's no more noticeable when you're on the PlayStation VR 2 that it's definitely more texture and not flat. I'm Ken says, uh, I only got time for shallow games. Long winded games can forget <laughs> it. So th this just points out something that we often say on that everybody's different and everybody likes different stuff. Um, just because we're, we're into kind of the more main course meals doesn't mean that, uh, that, uh, this guy's wrong for enjoying, uh, what we refer to as palate cleansers. So. Well, it depends on what you're describing as shallow games as well. Because Gazzlers is a is a palate cleanser, but it's one of the deepest games I've played in a long time. Right? It doesn't have to be shallow um, to be something you can pick up and put down uh, and walk away at any time you want to. You know. But as far as something like this, yeah, this is definitely a a beefy course for somebody that is not hungry. Right? Like if you're not hungry, you don't go sit down for a four, five course meal. So. Um, moving on, uh, Ghostbusters Rise of the Ghost Lord again, another uh, cross platform release. Um, from what uh, Eric says, a notable step down visually from the PlayStation version. Uh, but I got to imagine that the gameplay is, um, fairly uh, similar. You know, obviously, it's more immersive on PlayStation with the haptics and the triggers and all of that. Uh, but same game, uh, just uh, less immersive because of all these ancillary things but it is cross-platform you can't play with with each other right mm. so. that's right and that worked yep. pretty seamlessly actually the uh, the uh the networking works pretty good in it yeah yep uh foglands out on quest as well uh didn't play it on quest got to imagine that it's fairly similar on quest it, as it you, is did you say it, it actually looks better, better. Yeah, it actually looks a lot to me. It looks a lot better <laughs> on Quest than it does really? on PlayStation. On PlayStation, wow. for some reason, with the fog, I see the Mura like mm. terribly. You get that basically that like filmy, you know, um, ver you know, thing to it. Like it has that look to it because that the a lot of the fog lands is again you're in these tunnels and they have this fog kind of like laid over everything, and <clears throat> it just shows up more um, than you would in your normal playstation vr2 game and i thought it was less janky i thought than the playstation vr2 version as well oh, interesting yeah 
Interesting. Uh, too bad it's not good enough for me to go find out. Yeah, right. You're like, <laughs> uh, let me know when. Let me know when the uh, the big the next patch is. So, so here's where the thing gets interesting. So that those are all the cross platform releases um, for the month, and um, for what it's worth, like everything, you know, all, all of the uh, nominees for PlayStation VR two. All of the serious nominees that we voted on, those were all cross-platform games. And this kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier. If you're picking which platform had the best month based on quantity, it's PSVR 2 hands down. But if you're picking it based on quality, like which platform had the best overall releases, then it's got to be Quest based on the strength of their exclusives that they had this month. Uh, Quest very much pulling what is a typical Sony move, coming with the exclusives this month uh, on the back of the Quest 3 launch. Um, and uh, we'll start by talking about what seems to be everybody's favorite game this month, and that is Dungeons of Eternity. Um, this game is a pure roguelike dungeon crawler. And if you close your eyes and I say roguelike dungeon crawler, the game that you imagine is exactly this. You don't have to say much more about it than that. Like, uh, Eric, I, I think that it's pretty textbook in what they're doing here. Like, it, it's popular because they've they've got the gameplay down pretty good. And they've provided enough variety with the uh, the weapon upgrades and things that it's keeping people coming back. Um, but they're not reinventing the wheel here with what they're doing. This is, this is standard roguelike progression, and uh, it's it's a, a action based dungeon crawler. Yeah, and you know I'll go back to Ghostbusters. Like we were talking about, like what what I think is wrong with Ghostbusters, and you know it's the repetitiveness of it for me. And again, and, you know, yes, this in this game is the same, right? You go back in, you're hacked, you're slash, you do different things to kill enemies, and it's the same. But to me, this has a hook to it that makes me want to go back and keep doing it. Like I enjoy every time I go in and do it. And that's what Ghostbusters lacks for me. And that's where this game for me shines. Like literally this game is the same over and over and over again. So you have to make sure it's done perfectly to keep people going back in over and over and over again. And they do like th this game has me hooked more than any other. I think a game I played this entire month because two things multiplayer and it has a really good hook. And, and doing a dungeon crawler, or I'll call it a dungeon crawler looter, um, you know, extraction-based looter. I mean, I think it does it really, really well, and I want to keep going back in, even though I'm doing the same thing. I want to keep going back in and doing it. Uh, Escape Portal with the four ninety nine donation. Thank you, Anton. You're awesome, brother. Uh, so since Arizona Sunshine 2 is barely going to miss the cutoff for Game of the Year show, uh, co-op Game of the Year, has to be Crossfire versus Dungeons of Eternity, right? With an honorable mention to Hellsweeper. Uh, I can't think of any other notable um, co-op games that deserve to be in this conversation, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're not there. Anything uh, pop out to you guys in terms of co-op? I'm sure there's to be on some. That list? I'm sure there's something, but I mean that's a very, very accurate uh, assessment. You know, like, I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head either. I mean, I so. think you'd have to probably stick Ghost of Tabor in there as, you know, what platform are we talking? Does it matter? Well, Ghost of Tabor, I mean, I guess we could put it in a co-op discussion. I mean, it, it's not in the Game of the Year discussion specifically uh, because it's early access title, and mm -hmm. we're going to wait until it's at its best. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I think it would be in that discussion for sure. Yeah. Um, I can't really um, think of any others that would like stand out to me besides that. Alvo, I don't know. I don't know about Alvo. Uh, I don't know. We'll have to talk it over and and try to figure out if we would because Alvo's it's not a twenty twenty three game. It's it's a twenty eighteen game. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm leaning no on Alvo as as a nominee for that for game of the like, year for for co op oh. of the year. Is it because, really co-op though? I mean, that's I mean, co-op is different. I guess it's just terminology. 
co-op to me is more you know you've got two or three people versus the computer you know right. like versus pvp you know what i mean it's a different it's different what about squad based pvp like firewall so i don't know that was a good question too i know crossfire would definitely fit the bill but i guess again you know because you're Look going right up against you. a computer but i it would if you're going squad against squad would that be considered that'd be a good question so. i don't know um gamertag says uh dungeons of attorney had high levels of polish yeah it's pretty polished um i wouldn't like in terms of like visually i mean it's still obviously a quest game but it looks pretty good um it's not perfectly polished i mean it's better now they've they've patched out some of the bugs but there were definitely bugs to to start with and i think it needs some balancing like um uh, I think it really holds itself back by giving people all the health and money that they need by far. Like you're never going to run out of money and you're never going to run out of health potions. They're literally just laying around everywhere on every run because they give you so much of it. And I feel like, uh, roots. Oh, I'm a, uh, did you even play this game roots? I did. Yeah. I would yeah. say, yeah, no, that I agree. I agree 100%. It's almost like it's made the the money and the 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 potions pointless. Like what's the point of them if if they're so um they're just everywhere. I I agree with Gamertag in a sense. Um even just outside of for the polish, like little things, just the the ways things look as your uh the doorways, right? The way they look like portals and yep. I just feel like Everything is, it feels very, just feels very good. I, I can't think of anything that didn't feel right when I was playing. I, you know, like you said, there could be some more balance. Um, my question is, and I don't know because I haven't played to max level. What do you do? Like, what am I gaining all these abilities and weapons for to get to the, right. to, is it to get to the next, you know, like so that I can battle harder things? Like, I, to me, I, I get that gameplay loop, but it's only sustainable for so long. You know what I mean? And maybe I, I reach max level and that's when I get bored. But my guess is if there's not too much more than that, I won't make it to max level because I'll get bored um, sooner than that. Because I'm not one of those people that feels like multiplayer makes games. It's almost magic. And, it, you know, like it because I'm playing with other people, it's uh, it's that much better um a lot of times i'd rather play by myself these days but um i, I would say that it's going to take a while like i the, so far what i played which is i guarantee not even nearly as much as you guys have played i i thought it was done very well i had a lot of fun um i i will admit i did mostly bow and arrow um but i, I thought the melee felt really good too which i don't find in very many uh video or vr games so um yeah yeah, that's what this game does well, is uh, it gives you a, a good variety. Uh, there, there's a good variety of weapons and abilities. There's a pretty decent variety of enemies. And um, I'm not going to say that it has a ton of variety with re regard to the environments. There, there's a handful of environments that they reshuffled. Um, oh, no, 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 but, no, there's way more than that, Wes. There's, there's oh, there Betty's is. level 30. There's dungeons she hasn't even seen that, that she's just seeing now. I mean, there's way more than just a handful of different environments. Really? Well, I've yeah, yeah. seen like four. I heard <laughs> I'm, that. I'm, I'm, level, I'm level 25. I'm seeing dun I saw a dungeon with you yesterday. I have never seen before. Which it looked, it was look, it looked more. It wasn't even right. a dungeon. It looked like a cave. Um. Yeah, it was yeah, mines. It was mines, yeah, and it yeah, was mines. the That's first I'd seen. Yeah. yeah, that was number four for me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, I just don't think you have enough in there, enough time in there. I've seen probably twenty different dungeons. I, I again, I'm still seeing dungeons I've never seen before, and I'm level twenty four. Um. So okay. yeah, I mean, there's a there's a ton here. There's way more than I thought there would be. Um. When I first started. Okay. Fair enough. Um. So yeah. Um. It's a good game. It's a very good game. And um, I can see why people are so hyped on it. Now, I, I, don't, I don't see how people are... Like, some people are playing this for hours every day. Like, I couldn't do that. Like, 
Um, I'm at level 15 now, and I'm to the point where I could get in this every few days and spend an hour or two playing with my friends. Um, but I'm like Roots, like, if there's no end game, like, you're just looting to loot. That That's all you're doing is you're looting to loot. You're, you're, you're trying to get a higher level of weapon so that it does more damage so that you can go in and fight uh, the same enemy that can take a little more damage. Um, it, it's, it's repetitive in that aspect. Well, we don't um, know yet, though. I, we don't know what the outcome is. Like, we don't know. I mean, you know nobody's, yeah. nobody's, nobody's level don't cap know. yet, as far as I don't know. So, I mean, no, they, nobody's they level cap. My, it's, there's they, a pre- they, they, pre- they could do, they could have a, a prestige system like Call of Duty does, where you roll over and you start something else. They could have epic dungeons where you only can access these dungeons with, when you hit a different a certain level number. They like, could. These are the things that I would do if I was them. And they may have those plans in place. Who knows? Well, that's the thing. They could, they could have those things planned down the road, and they could exist. I, I would say that it's probably unlikely they don't exist at this time, or else we would have a heard about it. Um, even if you hadn't got to level fifty, and and really, even with end game content, you'd think even at level thirty, you'd see some of it by then. You know, because you're not going to get to level fifty, right. and then all of a sudden, that's when everything hits. We don't even know if it's fifty. Could be 100. Well, no, it is 50. The max is level. I saw, I saw on something it said it was 50. I hope they have more planned down the road, or if they don't, they hear this and they they add more to it. Because you know, at the end of the day, you want them, you want people to continue to play after 50. And and if enough people find start to find out that there isn't much after that, you know, it will start. Some people will stop playing. Um, but I think that people love this game enough that, I mean, it tells you how good it is and how polished. We haven't even talked about how cool, like the, I, I feel like their, um, their menus are really good. The, the, like even just like the keys and stuff, the way the key system and like everything's really, it's very user friendly, right? Like you're not searching for shit in your inventory. Where's my key? No, it's already at the door ready to go. You grab it and you put it in the go and you go, um, there's a simplicity to it and it flows and so yeah i i've enjoyed what i've had in there i haven't gone in multiplayer but um uh i think that would be cool as well yeah wife is uh she's approaching level 40 now oh wow and uh it's still pretty much the same uh the, the same <laughs> gameplay loop G- as, G- as what has been the whole time G- gt says do you know who else likes to play with themselves my mom. Yeah, she does. <laughs> he says that uh, you better read that because he <laughs> dropped his weights for it. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Damn, forty. Well, tell Shell that that's crazy, man. I guess we'll yeah, find she's out getting soon there. enough. She's like thirty six or thirty seven, something that's like crazy. that. She's about to. She's about to hit forty. Nice. Um, she plays it every day because this is um, this is another game that Guido can play. So like, oh nice. Now, now they have something other than walkabout to play, so <laughs> obviously they're they're doing that. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, if this is uh, if we're, I'm sure that this game is going to smash if when we do the poll to uh, to pick out game of the month. And based on its popularity, you would think that this would be a shoe on shoe in for game of the month, um, but it's not so easy. Not for me. And the reason why is because the best game that I played this month on any platform was another quest exclusive by the name of Genotype. Um, I love this game. I think this is an excellent story-driven sci-fi adventure action game uh, that is just my type of, of shit. This is what I like to do. Big maps nice uh variety of enemies nice uh explore exploration going on here good upgrade trees um a nice variety of weapons original uh a, a take on um shooter uh essentially and uh i just love everything about this game um th- this was another one today eric that i needed to be playing other stuff but I, I just kept going on Genotype because I just love it so much. It's so good. This is, this. I mean, you said it last when we covered this game a few weeks ago that this might be a game of the year nominee for you. For you, and 
I think it deserves to be in that conversation. It's that good. Absolutely. This is one of the best games I played this year. It is it, 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 the sheer size of this game too. Like it's huge. There's so much. The maps are huge, and there's just so much here. Like I, I, <clears throat> I don't even know how long this game is yet, but it feels to me like it's going to be twenty plus hours. Like I, I know that I'm. I don't think. I'm I don't like think five, it's going to be quite that in. long. I think yeah, what I, the devs. I think the devs said it was it was close to that though. Yeah, you know, now that I think about it, if you count like the time from your deaths and failed attempts, it might approach fifteen or twenty hours. Um, just on like your game save though, which only counts the successful runs. Mm. Yeah. I feel like I'm getting about halfway uh, through it right now, and it's between like four and five hours. So I think I think your your last game save will will be about. 10 hours or so maybe a dozen hours um but again with failed attempts on top of that you could get up close to 15 or 20 so you might yeah and it feels it feels that way to me like it feels like i i, I know how far i'm in already and i don't feel like i'm like even halfway yet so um yeah i think this, this game is really really good and this is the only game i think that would even give dungeons of eternity a run for its money this month I just cleared the uh, the barracks building. That first big building after the initial building, that first yep. big building that you come to, I just cleared it today. Um, wow. And made it into the next one. There's two more buildings after that, and then the end game takes place at the dig site. Um, so that that's where I'm at. I just went into the new building and played probably another 20 or 30 minutes after the new building. Nice. Um it's good though, man. It's it's really good. Uh, Roots, how much of uh, Genotype did you get to play this? Week? Uh, I have probably like an hour, or more, hour and a half or something. And um, I'm agreeing with everything you guys said. And even just the, I mean, you know, the graphics. Obviously, it's a quest game, but my God, how amazing the the different guns and and how alive they look. Like you got this gun, and it's got something gro alien thing growing out of it, shooting. I just feel like it's it's very unique and um, and the story is very intriguing. So, uh, I if I'm being honest, I had I've had more fun in this game than the game that everybody was just raving about. And I had fun in that game. I just had more fun in this one. So. Yeah, yeah. This is just more my speed here. There, there's a definite end game. There's a story driving me along. Uh, it's that cool dark sci-fi. Uh, story that you, the twist hasn't happened yet but you can feel it coming there's definitely going to be a twist before this ends mm -hmm. and uh like root said it, it's a very good looking game uh on the quest 3 but guess what this game is not enhanced for quest 3 it looks just the same on quest 2 as it does on quest 3 and um after talking to the devs uh, oh shit i don't know if i'm supposed to say this but mm -hmm. i guess i'm going to because i already did uh, this game is get, going to get Quest Three enhancement uh, sometime pretty soon. Look, so, um, I, my time I played through was on the Quest too, and it looked phenomenal. And this is the yeah, thing, and that's good. what I was saying about people not like not needing a Quest Three. Quest Two is still amazing. I mean, yes, hey, the Quest Three is going to be like hands down the best experience you're going to have for this game, or probably almost every every single Quest. Um, a uh, game for sure you know but it looked really good on the quest 2 and that tells you how good this game is in general right so if you have a quest 2 don't let that hold you back this is definitely worth playing through for sure yeah uh, and eric i mean you, whether you're talking about this or you're talking about dungeons of eternity uh just further confirmation of what we've said for years on this channel uh exclusives are essential to any video game platform people like to bitch about exclusives um uh, they don't like it they think it's anti-consumer i say just the opposite i say that the best games on any platform are always exclusives and uh here's just proof positive that that doesn't always fall in sony's favor uh it's absolutely the uh the uh the truth on quest as well yeah i mean the exclusive have been driving consoles for a year it's no different with vr headsets i mean it, it drives the vr headsets of 
who decides and, and it'll to go get what and it will push sales in different directions and i think that's only good for the you know for for both you know any platforms it, it helps on both sides so i think it's an with that said and with that said, th these games are only exclusives right now. Like th yeah. these are third-party titles. These these absolutely could come to other platforms in the future, and I hope that they do. Um, but these are two of the reasons right now to own a Quest, in my opinion, in 2023. Um, so there you go. Um, so yeah, I I'm not going to re-review this game. We already did a, a pretty long segment on it. I would have finished it by now. Uh, I stopped playing it when uh when they told me that quest 3 update grades were coming i just quit quit playing it until today um i wanted to get a little more time in it before i talked about it again um but uh yeah i i think um i think it's pretty obvious we have a a, a, a well i was gonna say we have a two game race but i'll go mm -hmm. ahead and throw seventh guest in there with it as well oh yeah because because of you know it's it's so good and People have uh, voted it unanimously, unanimously as the game of the month this month. But in my opinion, um, there's a two-game race here, and yeah. and it's and one of them is going to be the winner, and the other one's going to be the runner-up. Uh, the question though is which one's which. And for me, there's no question. Genotype is the best game I played this month on any platform. And uh, Dungeons of Eternity gets that second place, not because I like it better than Seventh Guest VR, but just because everyone else does, seemingly. Uh, so we're going to give it that respect. Um, I'll throw to you, Eric. Uh, what do you think? What's uh, what's your game of the month? I really, really, really like Genotype, and I think it could possibly, by the time I finish, if it, if it finishes as good as it starts, I think it could be a contender for game of the year. But I'm going to vote for dungeons of eternity i think it's the multiplayer brings it a little bit ahead of this game because i think there's you know there's something to be said for multiple people being able to get in and play this game and i think it's super polished and it's just really it's it's really well done um it's a game that i want to keep going back to all right so that's one one roots what say you ah uh. I don't know, man. <laughs> See, my thing is, is like I, I lately I just haven't been much of a multiplayer person. Maybe just I just want to hermit myself and be by myself. Um, you know who else loves to be a hermit by themselves? <laughs> um, so as much as I, I, I really did and do like Dungeons of du Dungeons of Eternity, and I think as a multiplayer game, it, it's probably the best one that I've played um, this year. And not didn't play with other people, but I can see. The potential and how many levels and leveling up to 50 and all the different dungeons but I, i've just i just to me i think genotype is the better game um i i have to vote that way as well more vr says off topic has anyone seen how beautiful grid legends looks on quest 3 or how it runs i've never heard anybody say anything good about grid legends so uh no <laughs> no i wow, haven't they I mean, did update unless, it. unless they did they did they do like a big upgrade for quest 3 because that i that came look like pole uh, position to me uh, in quest 2. it's interesting i hope they did yeah i go I, I got it i'll go take a look and check it out and a lot of people said that grid legends played okay it just looked like hmm. dog shit no, it was fun i actually liked it i thought it was the game itself was good but it looked so bad that i didn't want to go back to it Luke Rogie says that we should bump up the resin genotype using uh, uh, the Quest Games Optimizer. I haven't used the Quest Games Optimizer. I, I, I've used SideQuest in that capacity a couple of times, but I haven't used that optimizer. It's something Elliot talks about a lot. Hmm. I might need to uh, start looking at it now that I'm playing standalone games again. All right. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's see what the uh, what the chat's saying here. Forty five percent to forty five percent. So it looks to me. Oh. Yeah, it looks to me like I mean, considering the fact that Roots and I both voted mm -hmm. for Genotype, and the fact that it's tied with the chat, I think we might have a winner here. Yeah. With a runner-up, mm. though. And Genotype and, actually just pulls ahead. And then G and Dungeons yeah. of Eternity may, by the end of the year, 
when we get, we're talking about it, we might be singing a different tune, you know, because that's enough. I mean, look how much game people have been getting into in just a few weeks. It's been out. But this is the thing. We might be singing a different tune the other direction. People might be yeah. getting to that point and saying, you know what, it's I'm, I'm at 50 and there is nothing to do. Um, so who knows? It, it'll be interesting to see. We're not that far away and what from a that testament. discussion. What a testament to how good these two third-party indie quest standalone games are. That the seventh guest VR, which pretty much dominated the other two platforms this month, um, is just an afterthought on Quest. <laughs> like it got seven percent as of right now of the vote between everyone. Like. And uh, I gotta, I gotta admit, I'm surprised. I, I fully expected that the chat would go Dungeons of Eternity on this one, uh, just because of the enthusiasm that we've seen in our community for it. Uh, the DOE lovers are very vocal, apparently, but they're not the majority, apparently. Uh, at least not people who uh, stay up half the night watching our show. Um, those people agree with uh, Roots and I, and I think that's going to seal the deal genotype game of the month i gotta admit i did not expect to be saying that but i'm happy that i am saying that and of course dungeons of eternity with the runner up both of these games will get a nomination it's essentially the same thing as a draw uh only we've only had one actual draw that i can think of and it was earlier this year i don't remember what it was but um we had one that was literally split like i think i think i don't remember exactly but i think you two guys voted against each other and then i couldn't decide so we took it to the chat and the chat was dead even on it mm -hmm. and I then we just called that one a draw i still think i was right and eric was wrong i don't know what game we're talking about <laughs> yeah me too <laughs> i have no idea anyway genotype the winner dungeons of eternity the runner-up both of them getting the nomination. Both amazing what a, games. What a fucking month yeah, for VR seriously. games. I mean, come on. Come on, uh, man. Come on, man. PSVR 2 had like 25 games come out this month. <laughs> it was it was crazy. Um, but then again, you know, VR Pigeons was one of those games. And But think about where yeah. we were a year ago. PlayStation VR one and we were like it was like nothing because they were everybody was they were waiting for the new console to come out, right? So it was like it's such a big difference. It, like what a year makes, right? Difference. Absolutely. And um yeah, what a great month. And you know, when you consider the the PSVR one ports like Red Matter that came out this month, like PSVR two had a hell of a fucking month. It was great. Um but those two, those two on Quest really set it apart this month. And I think, honestly, Quest was probably the best platform this month based on those two strong releases. Yep. Let's, uh, let's, let's take a look at some uh, comments before we sign off because people love it so much. And, um, you know, uh, it was really the only thing I felt bad about not doing a regular show today was is that we weren't going to do the comments. But we are going to do the comments. Let's take a Thank look you. at what some people had to say. Um, starting with, I like turtles. I'll let Roots get it up here. Yeah, yeah. You know who else wants Roots to get it up? <laughs> no, nah, it's not happening. I'm you know who else loves when you have a turtle? My mom. Yeah, she does. Uh, I like turtle says I struggled with the steak analogy. The only reason not to eat steak every day is because it's expensive. Mm. Well, that's true for you and me. Like, I would eat steak every day probably if I could afford it, but not, that's not, not my true point. Not true for Skiva. Exactly. My <laughs> point is is that some people don't like steak, and it doesn't make them wrong for not liking steak. They just would rather have chicken, these people. Mm. It's fine. We're, we're, who are we to sit and tell them that they're wrong and we're right? Okay? And that was the analogy, and that's what I meant. So hopefully that clears it up for you, but um, maybe not. Uh, Rickeron seven nine or sorry seven five nine three Rickeron says uh, Crossfire. I have thirty five hours in it and I'm not close to being finished with it. For this game, I love the arcade style reload. 
I'm playing squad missions. It's hard for me using the manual reload. After I do all squad missions on hard, I'm going to start again on realism mode. Oh, Jesus, this guy loves this game. A lot of people do. And, th and this is what I absolutely love about um, w w when reality smacks the reviewers in the face. Like when, when Crossfire came out, it was all the rage to put out negative reviews. And we got a bunch of bad reviews on, on Crossfire. Like almost everyone shit on it. And since then, players have gotten the game in their hands. And guess what? Almost everyone fucking loves this game. Like, I see it all the time. People love Crossfire. And you know why? Because it's a great game. It just shows you people should try a game. I mean, obviously, you're, we're not going to try every game because you have to, at some point, you know, read reviews or whatever. But sometimes you just have to get in there yourself, you know, or or watch. And I don't know, man. Like, there's there's certain people that you can, like, gamer tag that you can really trust. Like, he's going to go into the fucking game. Like there's no, you know what I mean? Like yeah. that's the problem. Certain people just didn't go in and, uh, and just ran with it. You can't trust anybody except for the one and only truth sayer, 9030. He's the one and only. Yes. Truth -sayer. That's it. Uh, and what he says is uh crossfire is my second favorite PSVR two game right behind Gran Turismo seven. It's the best shooter on the system. In my opinion. Yeah. There you go. Dark winter. 8238. The PlayStation Store says four players for Sunshine, Arizona, Arizona Sunshine 2. Uh, it does. I, I went and verified this after I read it. Uh, it does say that. I don't believe it. I don't believe it for a second. I just think it's PlayStation Store bullshit. Uh, it would be cool if it turned out to be the be case. Chaos. Crazy. Um, I, I think if it is true, then it's probably like a horde mode or something. I don't, I don't think that the campaign is going to be four player co op. Mm -hmm. Like, I think they'll let you play through the campaign with a friend like they did in the first one. Uh, but it doesn't make much sense to move through a linear zombie campaign with a fucking squad of four, you know? It's already Unless it's Left for Dead or something like that, you know? It's already a little weird with two people, right? Four people is too much. It breaks the story if you have a crew like that, you know? Yeah. Michael Little290 said, uh, I'm glad you guys enjoyed Home Invasion. The team worked really hard to get it out the door, and we're happy to see people enjoying it so much. Well, uh, you deserve the praise, uh, Michael Little. You and your team did an excellent job, and it is um, easily the best mixed reality experience that I've played so far. So, let, me, uh, let me ask you guys this, and maybe Michael Little, if you're out there, you can answer for the next question, and, and we can see it. But... Like, I tried to go, I went into several mixed reality games on my Quest Pro in my room and was able to map, map my room out and everything. I cannot find where to down, I mean, I downloaded the game, but I can't find the mixed reality game in it. Like, I can't find the setup, it's, I can't find any of it. It's just like the main game. It's called Home Invasion. It's, it's it, just listed on the, it's listed I've, on the main menu. Well, I downloaded it, I've got it. I've downloaded it, I've got Home Invasion um and that's what's weird is like i downloaded the actual game and it says it's mixed reality it's just like when i went into it for the quest 3 uh when we were doing all that big huge <laughs> crazy setup um it was very clear in the menus the you're, setup you're you're on the wrong version that's all is it go to the men yeah go to the so go to like your app or go to the in in the in app menu and change your version off of the uh you have to change it to the live version okay you're probably on the press version or the early access version we had i had the same thing uh, okay cool because i i want to yeah. try it because i like yeah. i said i i really and i've done synth writers i've done a couple of other ones and i i really feel like it's um a, a good experience you know i feel like I'm going to try it on Quest 2 as well, and I think it's going to be a dog shit experience. Um, <laughs> but, Probably. you know, I, and I'm not, and bef before people freak out and say I'm trash in the Quest, I'm not saying the Quest Pros is going to be anywhere near the Quest. Quest 3's got a depth sensor. It's made for mixed reality. Clearly, it's going to be better. I just want to see if somebody that has a Quest Pro has any reason to, to get excited about mixed reality, and then I'll let you guys know. Awesome. No, it's really good. Oh, yeah. So, uh, 
congrats to Soul Assembly. They did a great job on it. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it a lot. Uh, main fan. Uh, according to David Haney, Quest 3 doesn't actually have a Ooh. depth sensor. It has a depth projector. That might help explain why it can't remember rooms well enough and also why it's so much cheaper than Apple Good Vision point. Pro. I think Apple Vision Pro has LiDAR in it or something. Um, yeah. I don't know what the difference between a depth sensor and a depth projector is. I, I know that the point I was making last week was that um, it has different technology in it than Quest 2 uh, with regard to like the, uh, the room setup. And it's trying to remember different stuff. It's different tech. That, that's all I was saying. Uh, sensor, projector, tomato, tomato. Uh, you know, okay, fair enough. Maybe it's a projector. I don't know. Uh, Scott's Wild Camper says, uh, Virtual Strangers is becoming my equal favorite VR channel alongside PSVR 2 without parole. I've also found VR Crewcast, which is great. Thank you, Scott's. That Those are big words. Like, to yeah, put yeah, us in real. in line even, with those shows, like, even close to PSVR two without parole is a very big compliment, for sure. Oh, Thank yeah, you man. very much. Yeah, we appreciate appreciate it. that. Yeah. Uh, Greg Karras, uh, I listen to what you guys say about the game and how you feel about it. How I feel about the game will be different than you based on my preferences. So your score means <laughs> nothing to me, <laughs> even if we had the same understanding of what a five is. I give caring about scores a one. An F, a half a star, a frowning face, not even worth buying on sale. Yeah, so you listen to the reviews. This is what people should do. You should listen to what the reviewers say, but this is not what people do. Not what a lot of people do. What a lot of people do is they come in with preconceived notions and biases. And they take those biases, and the first thing that they do is they look at a thumbnail and the clickbait title and they make assumptions based on that stuff then they'll start the video they'll watch the video using confirmation bias and basically hearing things that already confirm what they already believe about the title and then they zone out all the other stuff and then they look at the score at the end and then they'll take that score and they'll judge it and if it lines up with what they think about the game, then they'll say that 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 uh, that reviewer knows what they're talking about. And if it disagrees with what they think about a game or a platform, then they'll call the motherfucker a shill. Um, and, and a lot of times all of this without even going into the game themselves, <laughs> which is the yeah. crazy part. Yeah. So. And they'll argue about it. Like they'll go into message boards and on the discord and they'll argue about it having not played the game like they know what they're talking about because they watch three reviews or whatever like um i wish there were more people like greg Karras that just watch his reviews listen to what the reviewers say and then if, if they think a game's for them they play it and then they tell people what they think about it you know right yeah because if i like a game if a game looks intriguing to me i don't care what anybody says if it looks cool i'm gonna try it you know, same thing if it's like, well, I guess this isn't true because some of the best games I've ever played, like Hades or whatever, I had no idea it was on even a game. And so many people raved about it that I was like, fuck, I got to try this game. And then I was like, oh, my God, I'm raving about this thing. Um, so, yeah. Doomsly82 says, do you guys think we'd get an Arizona Sunshine remaster on PSVR 2? Um, I don't think they'll remake it in the new engine. Uh, that would be great if they would, but I don't think they will. I think it is a possibility that um, we see a similar type of um, port like we've seen from other PSVR 1 titles where you get the 4K uh, upgraded textures and the uh, you know trigger haptics and that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> I think, uh, Roots, that it's possible that we could see a version of Arizona Sunshine on PlayStation that is on par with uh what we've got on pc right now basically yeah, yeah i agree 100 percent um the corporate zombies uh <laughs> he's a good point he says loads of people have shit on starfield i have two days in that game now so um yeah that's true uh eric do you think we uh, could possibly see uh arizona sunshine remaster 
I don't think so. Do you? No, it just doesn't make it's sense possible. to me. It, does, it doesn't make sense to me at this point. Like they're gonna, they want Arizona Sunshine Two to be the standalone new game. I think you know, it just muddies the water to try and bring Arizona Sunshine. Could be down the road tomorrow. Could be like a yeah, could be a year tomorrow. or two down the road. This is the thing. Can they make money from it? Or is there a, exactly. is is there a uh, an audience that maybe plays PlayStation VR two that never played the first one, never had access to it? If they think that that audience is even a fraction um, big enough, they'll 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 put it out. And, you know, I don't know about a complete remake, but you know, I'd love to see a remaster. Yeah. Dank Media, nineteen eighty five. Biggest issue I have with Foundation is the low res skybox for space scenes. Looks like trash and removes any kind of wow factor. It's like a really shallow Mass Effect built for Wii, built for Wii to me. Enjoying it for what it is. Uh, edit, Wes sums up my thoughts, too, for the most part. So thank you, Jank Media, for sharing that. Yeah, the uh, the skybox is pretty pretty bad, but um, luckily you don't, you don't look at it all that much. It's kind of a background thing that I don't really pay much attention to, to be honest. Do um, you think they'll fix yeah, it? Yeah, keep playing. I mean, if... It- uh, if you're you going think. in there, if you're going in there looking for the skybox, I mean, I guess it's a big deal. But I mean, it's a story. It, it's I don't know. The skybox is such a small part of it. I mean, you you spend most of the time on a space station, not looking at a skybox, or or like on a planet, <laughs> looking at like in in like tunnels and stuff. Here, so, here's the thing, and hopefully they will fix it because it is a simple fix, and I think they will. Like we all, we've all want to look at that amazing. Uh, so, sky right like with the the beautiful planet and the there's just this alien pl- world and it, it is kind of off-putting what was it that game that we played that was space that was a bad skybox well i think it was star wars right squadrons when it first dropped or uh, something mm, yeah. uh, there was it something when it dropped with the there was boxes. something that had a really bad skybox and we bitched about it and then they fixed it and it was was significantly big better i i think it will be uh it, VR had some blurry skyboxes. Um, there was another one too. I think Carly and the Reaper Man, maybe. Yeah. That's no, there was one skyboxes. that was a star, starry sky thing, but maybe it wasn't Star Star Wars, but it was something. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's an easy fix. You'd like to think that they would uh, eventually make it better, but we'll see. Yeah. And with that, friends, that is our show. We did it. We made it through another nice. double header. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and say we're going to do two this week because every time I say it, <laughs> some shit happens and then it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't turn out the way we think. And we're getting um, down to the point where we we should be weaning down, right? When does that happen? It's already what middle, beginning of November. Yeah. Uh, so we have a few more weeks. A few more weeks of uh, a full schedule, and then. Uh, you know, pretty much all we'll be doing in December is one offs. We'll do a. Uh, a show to kind of set up the uh the voting for game of the year and all the categories and then uh you know we might do a, a show to talk about um like asgard's wrath 2 and arizona sunshine too those come out in december so we might cover mm-hmm. those uh but that'll be it um it's coming up quick so uh, yeah looper says um, you know who else loves a double header my mom! <laughs> I do. oh yeah she does <laughs> Too Rob Harv11 says, uh, I went on a similar journey to Scott. Started on Without Parole, then went to Virtual Strangers, then Gamer Tag, then Crewcast. Beginning to realize everyone knows everyone in VR. And that's true. It's a small <laughs> world, cool. right? Yep. Uh, anyway, um, it's getting late, so I'm going to go ahead and call it a night. I want to thank everyone who stayed up late and uh, helped us sort through this mess of uh, great VR games this month. It's not going to be any easier in november so uh you guys stay tuned lots of good stuff coming out this week and over the next few weeks can't wait to get into that and uh, talk to you all about it so uh if you're new to the channel subscribe click the thing come on guys we're sitting here we're doing three and four hour shows for you every sunday for free all we're asking you to do is just click the stuff and we're so close to four thousand, right three yeah we're getting there if we can manage yeah. our pace, if we can stay on the pace we've been on, we'll hit 4K by the end of the year, and that's our goal. So please, if you haven't already, click the subscribe button, and if you have, make sure that you 
ring that bell so that you can watch live when uh, when we go live on the uh, the channel here. Um, of course, if you'd like to do something extra, you can support us on Patreon. Three dollars. That's all we ask per month. That gets you access to our weekly show notes. It gets you access to our uh, exclusive content. It gets you uh, insider updates. It gets your name in the ticker at the end of the show. Shout out to Silver Nexus who joined the uh, the ranks of our Patreon this week. We appreciate you, and we appreciate everyone who donates uh, on YouTube and the uh, other methods as well. It all helps. Uh, we're going to need it. We're about to go to uh, Vegas and cover CES in January. Yeah. So uh, we're going to need that that extra boost of money, and uh, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but if you don't have any money to donate, we certainly can understand that. That is why our Discord is 100% free of charge. You can join us there by clicking the invitation link in the description down below. That's where we hang out and talk VR and sports and life. And uh, we were just watching a couple of police chases even earlier today. Uh, it's like there's one almost every day on there now, isn't it? Yeah, there's some crazy stuff going on. This is, a really, well, this is not a spoiler alert to anybody out there in 2023 that's actually paying attention. A lot of stupid people out there. A lot of stupid people. It's fun to watch. True. Yeah, it is. Uh, Quadzilla bashed the button. Thank you for bashing that button, Quadzilla. We appreciate it. And with that said, friends, we'd like to thank you all once again for watching. For Roots and Eric, I'm Wes. We will see you very, very soon. Up. Stay easy. See you later. Thank you.